gonna kick us in. Oh, that's telling us we live already, baby. We gonna do that. Oh shit, hold on. <laughs> hey, where's my engineer at? Oh, he's right here. Let me see. Smoke a little, <laughs> drink a little, <laughs> fuck a little. You know, that's my shit right there though. <laughs> that's actually what intrigued me to listen to this podcast, bro, was Is that damn song. Fuck. Well, let's go then. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. I grew up on the 50s, I love my whole city. Got the little ones with me, I ain't going back to prison. House with a yard, I get my own unlocks, I walk my own yard. I'm Figaro a filthy, where I come from, dog, everybody's filthy. Get your hands dirty with them concrete burpees. Beer runs and licks, my heart was made, dog, with every single brick. Legend in my own, I get my little shine on, got a house loan. I see a hater smiling, broke with a mouth full. Run with my ninjas, used to gun with my ninjas Used to split top ramens on the hood with my ninjas Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Hey, light that bitch up! Light it up! Shit, homie! Rhodium Radio, Hoodstocks collab, baby. Let's go. On a motherfucking Saturday night. <laughs> yes, sir. Feels good, feels good, feels good. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, dog. I got to do this little fucking uh, uh, ad thing for fucking Manscaped. Let's, let's just kick it off. Let's get it out the way real quick. Did you grow up in the 70s and 80s? The Bush on Bush era. In 2020, the honey see you naked, they be like, oh, damn, you're old school. That sounded Asian, huh? I don't even know why that came out like that. Oh, damn, you're old school. Anyways, get with the times, you old fucks. Manscape, the landscape. www.manscape.com. Use promo code Hoodstocks and get 20% off and free shipping. Get yourself a clipper that won't clip you up and nick you up and have you bleeding through your boxes. Or if, if you're still wearing motherfucking tantarans from fucking 1989, you don't want no blood on them motherfuckers. Manscape. Hey, bro, how come you guys aren't sponsored by Manscape, dog? Um, Did you decline it? I don't even know what Manscaped is. Okay, cool. I'm gonna poke you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna plug uh, the representative that uh, reached out to me. I'm gonna plug him with you because it's a, a way you can make money, my G. You know what I mean, Yo, that'll work. And I want you to get all the money there is out there. Yeah. Okay, motherfuckers. I see you right there in the chat, lighting that shit up. <laughs> yes, sir. Tonight on Hoodstocks, we got the big dog. The big dog, the biggest dog on the yard. We got him on the motherfucking Hoodstocks Dojo right here. Hey, <laughs> I love it, bro. When you wrote this shit, hold on. I, I know, I know, I'm kind of all over the place, but I'm about to fucking just like get it in, get control of the steering wheel. <laughs> hey, <laughs> when I read your shit, bro, I don't always do interviews, but when I do, I prefer. Hoodstocks. <laughs> and I read that shit, bro, and I hear your voice, my boy. I mean, it's it's obviously it's a spin off the fucking uh uh the 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 the, the fucking Dosekis, right? The Dosekis, dog. But bro, I was thinking about it and I was like, Tony A the Wizard needs to be the next Dosekis dude, dog. Hey, you know what? Light that up on the chat and let's see what happens. Yeah, we we need to we need to tag those seconds because this dude needs to be the next motherfucker right there. I don't always, you know what I mean? Oh my god, I love that shit. Hey, how many motherfuckers do you know? They used to kick back with fucking Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Easy E as a kid. You know, just chopping it up, posting up with these motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Like, bro. How many motherfuckers you fuck with that can say that? 
Shit is crazy. One of the first Mexicans to bless hip hop airwaves with legendary music. A brown brother with soul. A pioneer that kept his ear to the street. A turntable wizard. A trendsetter. Harbor area's own. Weed Moss is in the motherfucking building. Everybody, give it up for Rhodium Radio's Tony A. The Wizard. Let's go, baby. Woo! Wow. Let's go. I just did a line of cocaine, my boy. Sorry, dog. Hey, no worries, homie. <laughs> uh, damn, that was so good. I can barely wait to hear what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, you and everybody else on this motherfucker right here, dog. Every The anticipation for this podcast, my boy, my DM was fucking lighting up. The comments were lighting up. Uh, I mean, a lot of people, uh, a lot of raza, they, they, there's only two podcasts they listen to, bro. They listen to you. And they, some of them listen to me, bro. You know what I mean? And, and I guess they're just, they're happy that, you know, we're here to have a conversation, yeah. brother. They're happy to hear you see, on, uh, to be on the uh, on the platform, brother. And, and, I, and I thank you very much for uh, swinging by, my boy. Well, uh, first of all, let me say it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I remember when I was checking out your uh, podcast, uh, one day I just reached out to you on the DM and I just said, hey, you know what? Anything you need, here's my number. And you did the exact same thing. And after that, we connected. You came on mine. I'm here now. Ask me whatever. I'll probably say some shit that I've never said before, but that's what we're here for. A hundred percent, dog. You know what I mean? Thank you, brother. Yeah. And, and you, you know, like I reached out to you, you reached out to me. It was love off the rip. I mean, I seen you. You started a little after me, my boy, and your shit just went fucking took off bro and i said whoa this dude is doing the damn thing dog and and so when i seen you do that bro my first initial reaction was let me reach out to big dog and say hey homie i see you dog yeah Keep fucking get that shit dog like i'm not a hater bro no. you, you know what i mean yeah. and, and 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 what i like about what i do and you do um you know it's some 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 cats they 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 come at me with the music thing and i'm like you know what like, there's certain cats that I've had on that do music, bro, that I, I really fuck with their music, dog. You know what I mean? Um, but some cats come at me, and I'm like, all right, their music's kind of cool, dog. But really, I'm like, you know what? I think you might need to go holler at Tony A, the wizard, because that's the platform where you want to, you know what I mean? Their fucking music is going strong. This is the, the big dog right here. This is what he does. I mean, I just want the grimy hood rat stories. I want to know how, you know what I mean? You know, you know, you cluck the VCR. You smoke the crack, homie. You fucking spin the fucking pokey homie i want those stories right here dog right you know and you know what dog i think you just and i and i had this conversation with you too dog i think you are the perfect individual dog that can just deal with uh, uh there's a lot of eagles when it comes to dealing with these rappers right a, a lot of fucking eagles man and uh i i've said it in past uh episodes that like there's been times that i would say within the last 20 episodes, I've almost like wanted to say throw in the fucking towel in this bullshit. And I'm going to tell you why. I've, I've done maybe about 110, 111 episodes now. Okay. And Shout out to that. Thank That's you. a big accomplishment. You know what I mean? My bad. This is going to be going all night long, my boy. So, you know what I mean? Okay. So I'm trying not to, I'll try not to annoy you with the, you know what I mean? The, the audience. All good, brother. Yeah. So what happened was uh, you get a lot of guys that feel entitled. Obviously, they don't compare to the guys that are show me love and that appreciate being on the platform, but you have these certain knuckleheads that will come at you on some gangbanging shit. Like for an example, Hey man, what the fuck is up with you, homie? And I'm like, the fuck? You know, I'm like, who the fuck are you? Well, I'm so-and-so I got one fucking song and it's been on this platform and I got 500,000 views. You better fucking recognize. <laughs> well, Hey, matter of fact, let's get you on next week. Since you're coming at me so correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. So, Fucking idiots. So I, I, I guess what I'm going to say is this, that uh, I was taught this a long time ago, that um, you only go as far as your attitude. You know, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Approach is everything. And a lot of those guys that are, and if they're listening right now, this is a message to you. You will never be on my platform because of the way you came at me. Some of these guys actually even threatened me. Some of these guys have actually gone live on their Instagram and even talked about my grandbabies who I've actually mentioned on my platform. Like, that low. That's violation on all areas, bro. I mean, you, uh, bro, you, you can mention the grandbabies, homie. Slap the shit out that motherfucker, dog. You know what I mean? That's, the, yeah, dog. And, and that's just, 
Ah, man, it's a, it's a it's a tough business, bro, because you're going to deal with classy cats, dog, that will you like, you know what, bro, you carry yourself well. You're going to go places just because you carry yourself so well. Motherfucker, you are talented, but your attitude is stupid, and you just said, what about my motherfucking grandkids, homie? Yeah. You ain't going to make it to second base, homie, because you're going to get your ass fucking knocked the fuck out, dog, you Period. know what I mean? Period, dude. That's crazy, bro. Uh, I had this one dude tell me, uh, I'm going to roll up to your studio. I got your address from so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, I'm going to fucking who bang on your studio. That's what he told me. And all I said was this. Look, bro, you don't know where I'm from, homie. You don't know who lives around me. You don't know who I know. But I guarantee you, you show up to my neighborhood, you will not leave alive. I will fucking guarantee you that. Of course, you never showed up. Uh, thank, thank God for that. You know, but, <laughs> you know, here's my thing. Uh, I'm a grown-ass man. And uh, I'm, I'm 52 years old. I still live in my neighborhood where I was born and raised. So for somebody to say, I'm going to roll up into you, you know damn well you ain't going to do that. I mean, if you're going to, if you really are going to do that, I mean, you, nine, t nine times out of 10, you're not going to give the motherfucker a heads up. And especially a, a grown ass man that has been in the game way too fucking long. And he's still here and he's still in his neighborhood for a fucking reason. Right. My G. So, so that's the, <laughs> the small element of the people. And I say small because the love and the respect is overwhelming compared to these small idiots. But those little small idiots sometimes, man, if there's enough of those little small ass idiots, man, I mean, it, it, it can, you know, it can really fucking, I mean, that's why I say what I say when I say that you are the perfect individual to deal with all these fucking animals, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, you're, you're, a, you're, you know what I mean? You just, you know what, you have a, I, you know what I was tripping on you, bro? So ever since I, uh, the first time I talked to you, bro, heard your voice, dog, you know what I mean? You have a matter of fact way about yourself. When you talk, it's like, all right, you telling it what it is, you know? You Has anyone ever told you that you have a, like a matter of fact way, the way you speak, bro? No, no. <laughs> No, I like it doesn't sound like it's bullshit. Like when you say something, it's like, all right, okay, dog. That sounds, you know what I mean? Sounds like homie ain't bullshit. Like there's some cats is like, oh, I don't know, dog. Something about the way he's saying that shit. Right. But having a matter of fact, the way you say it is a little more, I don't know, bro. You know, I, I, I've been, you know, I've been told that, you know, you're very straightforward and, you know, what you say is pretty much what you mean and there is no other way around it if you will yeah it's either yes or no black and white there is no gray area so that's what i'm saying too yes dog. yeah most definitely black and white i don't see too much gray area when when you say something you know yeah but that's the grown man in you bro yeah, yes sir yes sir and you know and of course i was taught you know as a youngster not only at home but also in the neighborhood that your word means everything your word means everything you know and it still means everything to me if i tell you i'm gonna be here i'll be here now I should expect the same from you when I say you in general. You know, when somebody tells me I'm going to show up at your pad, you know, uh, for a Wednesday interview, don't cancel on me the hour before, bro. Yeah. You know, because I take that shit to the heart because <laughs> you gave me your word and I booked you a month in advance, a month and a half in advance. So you knew. And then for you to tell me an hour before the show, you know, look, I, I have so many numbers that I can call people like that and they'll come for an interview. 100%. Okay, but yeah. when I book somebody and then you do that to me, nah, homie, like, that's it. Ya te rompiste los carzones. You tore your drawers with me. <laughs> you know? So. 100%, dog. And I, and I, you know what, bro? I get, I mean, I give you props, bro, because it seems like when you do something, I mean, you really uh, do it. When you did your music, bro, you really did it. Now you're doing this podcast thing. I mean, you are doing it on a professional level. You are a uh, 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 consistent. I mean, you're booking dudes a month and a half beforehand, bro. Yeah. So that that is that can that tells me a couple things. That tells me there's a lot of people trying to get booked. Yes. And and that also tells me that uh, we are on schedule. Yes. We are not fucking around. Yes. It, let me share something with you that I think that this should encourage other podcasters and other artists. Um, let me name guys like MC Magic. He drove from Arizona, showed up on time, actually showed up the day before, stayed at a hotel that he paid for because his manager booked him to be on my show. His manager, Big D, much love, much respect to Big D, tells me, your show by this time next year is going to be the biggest uh, Chicano platform out there. That's what he told me. And it is. 
Well, you know what? Thank God for that, brother. It is, though. And here's what I said. Nah, Congratulations I, to that, my G. Thank you, brother. You, I mean, you. you put in that hard work, bro. Thank you. You deserve everything you got. So G Give them the flowers while they're here, like everybody says, right? Yes, sir. Thank yes. you. So MC Magic shows up on time, Arizona. Had a guy named Mr. Las Vegas that drove all the way from Las Vegas, showed up on time, kept his date. Had a guy, uh, uh, Duende, drive from Las Vegas, kept, kept his date, is kept that, his time. Is that dude Duende out of Las Vegas? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I had a guy, Sir Dino, uh, ex-Norteño rapper, become pastor now, drove all the way from Stockton, showed up on time, okay? Yeah. Uh, I had a uh, Carolyn Rodriguez, SPM's wife, flew from Texas. Carol, Carol, that's his wife? Yes, Carolyn oh. Rodriguez, yes. Oh, yes. shit, the singer, right? Yes, so she... I, I remember when he did that, bro, but I didn't know she, that was his wife. Yes. Wow. So she flew from Texas, showed up on time, kept her date. I had a guy named... Is that it? I'm sorry, bro. Is that his baby mama? No. no. Okay. I go, go. had a guy from Atlanta, Lalo KV, much love, much respect. He, he has the biggest uh, car club out there in Atlanta, Chicano. Yeah. Flew from Atlanta the day before to show up on my show. And I remember his words when I asked him. I said, uh, um, um, I'm, well, I told him, I'm happy you're here, man. And he said, no, I'm happy. He said, because you don't know what it means for me to be here in your presence. 100%, dog. You know, and, and to me, that was humbling. All of these guys kept their times, their dates, showed up on time. Now you, I got guys here around here in LA, I book them a month and a half ahead of time. Hey, homie, do you think maybe you could reschedule me for like next month and shit? Cause like shit jumped off and los mando a la verga. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, I'm dead serious, bro. Like, I'm a man of my word, bro. Yeah. I don't cancel on people. Yeah. You know, if I tell you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Damn, you got now. You got me thinking about because I've had a, I've I've told a couple cats, dog. That yeah, I'm gonna get you on. I'm gonna get you on, bro. Woo, woo, woo. You know what I mean? And it's not that I'm not a man of my word, but the way Hoodstocks does it right here is Hoodstock does it on the motherfucking fleas eye. You know what I mean? That's how we do it, bro. I, yeah. I, um, I mean, of course, you know what I mean. We got fucking big dog right here. You know, uh, you know, I can't, I can't, do, I can't do you like that. Not that it, I'm doing other people like that, but I usually like to do it on the fly, bro. You right. know what I mean? Uh, hey, what's up, fool? You know what I mean? Or I, I might be have someone in mind, bro, that I'm gonna have come on, and then some dude just randomly uh, DMs me, and 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 we 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 we, we pop it off and pop 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 you know what i mean and I, I i like what he's doing you know right. what i mean i'm like you know what, bro it's it must be meant to be let's get you on this weekend dog you know what i mean i do it like that i really do it you do it in a business fashion and i salute you for that dog thank you because i need to uh maybe level up a little more get a little more serious build a team around the, the hoodstocks uh, uh podcast platform you know what i mean uh, uh, um, uh, uh, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Yes, sir. You know, so I can't do it all by myself. I hate doing all this shit right here, dog. I be fucking some shit up. <laughs> Fools get here and I'm fucking with the lights and I'm like, what the fuck's that fool doing? That fool tweaking and I'm looking at the thing because I think there's a glare of the light, dog. You know what right. I mean? I, I, eventually, I will get a team, dog. And uh, eventually... Um, Maybe I'll be able to book people a month and a half in in, in advance, dog. But I am so far. I'm, I, I stretch myself very thin, dog, because I work forty hour a week at work. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I go to two different schools. I go to UCLA and I go to uh, ETI. Okay. A, apprenticeship for a electrical union. I'm in my fourth year for that. Awesome. Next year is my fifth year. I journey out from that, bro. You know. Um. So I'm. I'm and then I have. I have these little. I got these little girls, bro. I got kids. You know what I mean. So they need a lot of attention, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I just do it whenever I can do it. Whatever it works for me. You know. Um. Yeah. In that sense. But sooner or later, honestly, bro. Like, man, if I can do this shit full time, bro. If I can make a living off of fucking shooting the shit with fucking dope motherfuckers like you, dog. Damn, bro. That'll be a dream do job, dog. Well, right now, bro, let me say, let me, first of all, let me go ahead and give thanks to God, brother, because right now I'm living like the retired life. Yeah. So I'm blessed. But at the same time, I cannot go on without giving thanks to my team. Like, first of all, John motherfucking Elkins in the motherfucking house. He runs everything for me. And I always give credit where credit is due. I'll even give credit if somebody gave me a fucking ride. You know, if, if I couldn't have made it here and somebody gave me a ride, I'll give them because that's just the way I am. I like to shine light on people, bro. It's always been in me. I've always told people there's enough light and enough money to go around for, to, to everyone. I don't know why people think they can rip people off, bro. 
You know, uh, if you're unhappy, tell me what I can do to make you happy. I want to work things out with you. I want you here. That's how I am with my team. And, and that's why I believe we're winning because I surrounded myself with a team. I can't do this all by myself, bro. So, John, also let me shout out to my boy, DG, uh, Daniel Jones, and just other people that have helped me, uh, Roger, uh, Boomer, you know, and even my son, Brian, you know, has helped, who has helped me promote it. I, uh, I have to give thanks to them because all of, all of them surrounding me is what makes the dream work. A hundred percent, dog. I mean, they always talk about, I mean, this is an old saying that uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody in the mama's heard is that, you know what I mean? A well-oiled machine uh, keeps that machine, uh, you know, running uh, smoothly, you know? And um, uh, yeah, bro. Um, I, you know what? There was a once, that, that's how I feel too, dog, in regards to this platform right here. I Like, I get joy out of bringing these cats from the neighborhood, these, yeah. these young homies from the neighborhood, bro. And, and 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 some of these cats are very intellectual fucking human beings. And they've just never, they've never, how do you say, put one foot in front of the other uh, to, uh, I like to give these guys light, bro. Like, hey, check this fool out. This dude's only got 100 people that follow him on Instagram, but let's get into his mind. And and I've really, like, I have, I, I've watched that I've been able to, like, elevate uh, uh, certain individuals' lives by just putting them in that seat, having them tell that story, and realizing that hey, you know what, I'm, I'm special. You know what I mean? Yes. Like special in a way that, you know, I got something that I can offer the world possibly. You know, and I love it when I see my boys, dog, on Instagram now and now that they, they do their philosophy thing, they do the religion thing, whatever they do. And now I see them doing more lives because they got a little audience now. You know what I mean? Because people seen them on Hoodstocks, dog. Growing up, um, I was I always had to fend for myself, dog. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, my mother, my mother, my, it's one hundred percent. My mother hated me, bro, because I reminded her of my pops, dog. My pops, yeah, it was just such a fucked up growing up, dog. So I always fend for my fucking self, dog. So at a point in time, I was always just like, like me, 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 me. I'm out for myself. I gotta get mine. I ain't got nobody else that got my fucking back. You know what I mean? I didn't get that fucking love raised. You know what I mean? Growing up, mama never, you know. I got mom issues. I'll be the first one to admit it. But anyways, what I'm saying, though, is being such a selfish person for so many fucking years, dog. And now all I want to do, dog, is I want to fucking put people. I, I started this platform so I can give back so I can see, you know, what, dog, I was been in the pen a gang of years. I've been on the streets a gang of years with you with some motherfuckers that got some badass stories, bro. Yeah. Let's fucking shine some light on these motherfuckers, dog. You know what I mean? Let's, let, maybe I can change their fucking life. Maybe I can encourage them to, to write a fucking book, dog. To mentor fucking kids. To share a story. Not to fucking, not, not, not to uh, 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 celebrate the gang life and say, hey, this is, you know. No, to teach that maybe you don't want to go down this fucking road, dog. Yes. Homie, I get so much satisfaction. And, and then behind the scenes, bro. I connect these dots, bro, that people don't even see, dog. Yeah. Oh, let me hook you up with this for right here. Matter of fact, bop, 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 bop. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's 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 very, very, like, I sleep so much better at night, dog. Um, I, I'm not that selfish dude no more. Um, I mean, I just, I, I love this, bro. I, I really I really love doing this Hoodstocks thing, dog. I really love having these cats that I have on. And I'm, I'm starting to be very particular on who I have on here, you know, because I don't, I, I, I don't want to do, uh, uh, um, you know, what do they say, uh, uh, quality over quantity, yeah. you know, so that's what I really try to do. Now we're talking about quality. Some people be like, quality, fool, you got these motherfuckers that are living on the side of the fucking freeway on this shit, dog, right, you know what right. I mean? But I just really, I'm really looking for those special stories, dog, yeah. you know, yeah. to have on here, dog, and, and, and just to, you know. Really what you're saying is that a lot of these people that the world will call nobodies are really somebody. They are, bro. They are really somebody. Uh, uh, let, let me share something with you, and this pertains to uh, my podcast, and I think you'll be able to relate. I want to say 1990, 1992, I went to San Francisco for the first time. We went to the biggest radio station out there. It was called K K M E L K M E L. Okay, and our, our single had just dropped, and uh, uh, actually no, our album dropped in 1991, but we were doing a promotional thing out there. for for Scandalous. Yes, in, in San Francisco, so we went out there to the biggest radio station, and they had this one black individual. He was a rapper. I won't mention his name, uh, but he never became anything, and I'll tell you why. 
the DJ really wanted to interview him because they were saying that he was the next biggest thing, okay? He told us to our face in front of him, look, I'm going to be real with you guys. I don't really even like your shit, but I got to do you guys' interview. <laughs> he said, but I brought him at the last moment, so I'm going to give him some of your guys' time. So he wasn't even supposed to be interviewed. It was supposed to be all your time. All of our time. Yeah. We didn't say anything because we thought we're nobodies. So we sat down, we go live. This whole time, this guy is fucking uh, either drunk or high or just fucking out of his mind. So the guy keeps asking them questions. He rarely asks us anything. So he continues to ask this guy questions. So what's, and then the guy, I guess he was like this and he said, man, I don't fucking know. What's up with all these fucking questions? And he cursed live. And he lost all that guy's respect, okay? So he turns his attention to me and High C. I answered all these questions properly. At the very end of the show, uh, he pulls it to the side and he tells that guy, you can get out of here, man. He looks at us and he says, I will never, ever play his music ever again. So he looks at me and he goes, and let me tell you something. I don't like your guys' music, he said, but I like you. He said, and because I like you, I'm going to put your music on regular rotation. So now we go to Rodian Radio Podcast. I get a lot of dickheads that DM me comments on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. All you interview is a bunch of fucking nobodies. I'm sick and tired of these fucking lames. I'm sick, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I want to shine light on people that the world will call nobodies. Okay. Let's go. That's what I want to do. Okay. My G. I think we on the we on the same mission, bro. We on the same road, bro. You know what I mean? I mean, I think you just might be on the uh, uh, you on the four hundred five, and I'm on the one ten or something. <laughs> I don't know, dog. You know what I mean? Okay. If you really want to see DJ Quick, you know, Game Snoop, you know, uh, whoever E forty, those guys have already been interviewed by millions of people. Go watch those uh, interviews. There's tons of them out there. You know, tons of them. Yeah. They're going to say the same shit with me on my podcast that they've already answered 10,000 times. Now, when I interview people, I ask them a lot of, not necessarily personal questions, but here's what I tell them before the interview. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about yourself. What do you like to watch? What do you like to do? Who's your favorite team? Do you like to read? Who was your favorite superhero or whatever? I'm going to tell you why. Because I want people to get to know you before the artist. Because if they like you, even if they don't like your music, they will support you because they like you. Check it out, bro. I love what you just said right now, dog, because I just had this similar question. I mean, this sim excuse me, this similar conversation two weeks ago with a, with a, with a, a friend of mine, bro. He does music. His music isn't really uh, uh, popping. The numbers ain't there. Right. You know, this and that. I want to have him on the podcast because outside of his music, bro, this dude is a very smart individual. He's a very interesting individual, dog. Yes. You know what I mean? So I don't want to. I don't want to disrespect him and and right. say, hey, bro, I don't want to have you on for your music because I know he wants to come here and he wants to pump his music, pump his music. Right. So I said, bro, check it out. So I had to. I had to like. Sometimes in conversations, bro, people are easily offended, bro. Yes. And the last thing I want to do is offend somebody. You know what I mean? I, I, because I've offended people all my fucking life, and I used to take, I used to get pleasure out of it, bro. You know what I mean? But now I'm that guy. I'm not that guy no more, dog. You know what I mean? Even though sometimes it is kind of fun, dog. But I tell him, I said, bro, like I don't want to tell him straight out, bro, that hey, you know what, bro, like nah, not your music, bro. Um, and finally, I tell him like this. I said, hey, my G, check it out. L let's have you come on and not talk about your music. Let, let these people, let's talk about you, your endeavors, your business, you, you know a lot about health, this and that. Let people get to know you. Yes. And they'll get to know you for that. And then they, they'll like you for that, bro. And they'll be like, oh shit. Oh, he does music too? Let's peep his music out. Right. And they already like you, bro. Yeah. So they're naturally probably gonna yeah. gravitate towards your music. Yeah. It's just a, it's it's it, it, it's just a tactic, dog. It is. It's a tactic it to get them to this other fucking lane where you initially want to get them at. You know what I mean? Now it's it's not it's not blindsiding the 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 the, the folk. You know what I mean? The, right. the the audience. It's just say, hey, you know what? Get to know me now. Check this out. This is also what I do. You know. Right. And I was trying to and and so then he goes, ah, he goes, all right, luck. I get what you're saying because I really had to break it down, but yeah. it took me a minute to break it down though because I was so worried about uh, I didn't want to offend him. You know right. what I mean? Of course. Of you course. know, um, because I, I'm not a huge fan of his music. 
I like his music, but but I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of him as an individual. Yes. You know. Yes. And so. You, you know, you know, one thing about a lot of these people that many people would call unknowns are some of the most interesting people that I have ever met. And preach. Uh, some of these people that have talked shit about some of my artists doesn't offend me, but you're only making yourself look like a fucking jackass because the very next day after you hear their interviews, hey bro, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. That, that person's story was deep. I didn't know the struggle. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Antes de hablar is when open side. Before you speak, better to think first. You know, uh, I always, I've always told people, you know what, before you say anything, it's better just to listen. Just wait first. Many people have done that and they've hit me. You know what, dude, I wasn't going to tune in, but I said, what the fuck? And I heard homegirl's testimony or I heard, you know, what homeboy went through. I didn't know that. And that's why he raps the way he, fuck, he's got my, yeah, but you were talking shit the whole time. Now, I don't take it personal. I like, cause they're not saying it to me, but they're talking about an artist that they don't even know. So all I'm saying is, antes de hablar is one up inside. Before you speak, it's better to think. Yeah, hundred percent. And this is and this is back to what I was saying initially, bro. You are the perfect person to to have the platform and to be in the position position that you are with these individuals, bro. Why? Because you're teaching some of these guys cer certain things, bro. Like shit that you've learned already, bro. Yes, sir. Like you know what I mean? Like you said, bro. Like you know, hold on a second before you popping off. You know what I mean? Take a step back, my yeah. G. You know. Hear this motherfucker out, and maybe you'll have a different perspective on his music or, or him as an individual, yes. so on and so forth, you know? But, you know, I, I love that, bro, you know? And, uh, man, dog, you, you, you're doing the damn thing, brother. Thank you for doing what you're doing, dog. Thank you're you. giving the Raza a fucking platform. You're giving Chicano rappers a platform. You're giving uh, these beautiful uh, uh, Chicanas a platform, bro, you know what I mean? You're really, really fucking shining the light on them, dog. Um, I don't know uh, how far our, our, uh, they'll go in this music industry because this music industry is a... Uh, 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 Excuse me, it's it's a, a black dominated music industry, right? They hold the the yaves, right? They got yeah. the keys, homie, right? Yeah. You know, and I was listening to an interview uh, that you did, um, uh, you know, uh, not uh, you know a little while back, and um, it, it was funny, bro, because you were saying that everybody was hearing Tony A, Tony A, Tone, that the homie Tone, you know, and yeah. and they didn't realize they thought you were a black dude. <laughs> and when they seen that you were Mexican, it kind of fucked them up. Yeah, it changed everything. It changed everything, bro. Yeah. You know, they 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 were you like would have had right of passage if your skin color was different at that time, correct? Yes, yes. And I and I went through a lot of that, but before I, I share with you, I'm going to share a story with you about being discriminated against, okay? Uh, I want to say something. When people say that all you do is interview nobodies, at one point in time, Game was a nobody, Snoop was a nobody, Warren G was a nobody, NWA was a no They were all nobodies at one point. Let's show love and maybe we can make some of our own people a somebody. By support, not by hating. So it's, it, you know, all you gotta, to, to hate, all you gotta do is be an idiot. You know? It's easy to hate. Yeah, it's easy to hate. Now. Even though I know nothing about that, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just not in my, it's not in my DNA, bro. Same. Now, uh, I'm going to share with you guys a story that uh, I rarely ever shared. Um, everybody knows who the Hughes brothers are, okay? The Hughes brothers are Alan and Albert Hughes. They're directors. Uh, I'm going to tell you where they started. Their first videos, well, they, they got out of film school. They went to Disney uh, where we were signed, and they asked if they could film videos for us. So they filmed two videos for me and High C. First jobs ever. From there, they did stuff for Tupac. They knew Tupac personally. From there, they did stuff for MCA, Spice One, etc. Then they went on to do their big smash hit, Menace to Society. Yeah. Okay. Was... Then they did uh, other movies, and I'm not saying them in a row. Uh, um, what's that? Dead Presidents. Yeah, that was hard too. Then they did The Book of Eli. They did a, a documentary called, um, I guess, American Pimp. Yeah. And uh, just recently, they did uh, The Defiant Ones, Dr. Dre, Jimmy Iveens. Okay. Those are the guys that I knew going up in the business. So they were going to open up their own record label. They were about to sign a guy that's still big in, in, the, in the game right now. Okay, a brother. Okay, a black guy. And um, so they asked me, because they really liked me, submit your music, submit your music. We're going to open up this record label. We're going to make this shit blow. 
Okay, cool. They told me who that rapper was, and I said, no problem. Started submitting my music, started submitting my music, okay? Um, finally, they called me in and said, hey, uh, this guy wants to meet you, man. This guy really, really likes your shit. And uh, I was like, for real? He goes, yeah, bro. He, like, he really digs it. All right, cool, you know? Yeah. So we go to Hollywood. I meet. Homeboy walks in, sits right next to me. Alan and Albert come out, and they said, hey, we saw that you guys already met. And we were already talking. We were chopping it up. We were, I was making this guy laugh. Yeah. I'm thinking, we're going to get along just fine. And he goes, so I saw you met Tony already. And he said, no, he hasn't gotten here yet. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this dude? Who's this dude I'm talking to? Is this the janitor? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I said, no, it's me. And I wanted to shake his hand again. And he had his hands on the armrest. And he tells them, can I talk to you guys? Ah, oh, my G. So they go in the office, and about maybe about 30 minutes later, one of them comes out and tells me, hey, uh, hey bro, um, I'm sorry to tell you this. Can I talk to you outside? And I was like, yeah. Not in the office, outside. Yeah, on your way to your car. Pretty much. And then he yeah. told, told me like this. He said, uh, he, he thought you were black, and he just wants to keep it all, all black. You know, he didn't know you were Mexican. And I said, well, my beats aren't Mexican. You know, I said, they're just hip hop beats. And he was like, yeah, but he just wants to keep it all black. And I said, oh, okay. I said, all right. And I didn't know how to feel. Honestly, I, I didn't know how to feel. So I uh, just went back to my car and I left. What, what, do, what can you do? I'm 22 years old, you know? So uh, I just went back, but now on the brighter side of, of things, I never felt that way with um, High C, Quick, Second Tenant, AMG, even though at times, at times with High C, there was a little clash because on the album cover uh, that we did for Disney, okay, um, it was me and him, a black and a Mexican. In the very beginning, he was against that, you know, and if he hears this, it'll probably bring up old things. Me and him are good right now. We're really good. Um, we got love for each other. We've known each other for a long time. And I like to cut him a little slack because he was like 19 years old, okay? And I like to believe that people better themselves and have matured and have grown. So I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. But during that time is why I'm making this, this sharing this. He was just like, ain't nobody going to want to see a Mexican on the cover. Uh, when we filmed our video, Leave My Curls Alone at Venice Beach, uh, he told me the same thing. Are you sure you want to be in the video? And I was like, what do you mean? I produced a song. You know, and he said, yeah, but I don't know if anybody's going to want to see a Mexican in the video. And I said like this, man, I don't give a fuck. I said, I did it. You know, and I had to remind him. I said, look, bro, on the real, I got love for you, but I found you at the Swamp Me, bro. You rapped on my mixtapes. And, that's, you know? what, and that's, what, that's what brought you up. Yeah, I said, I put you on my, I was already doing tapes with Cube and Dre and Easy. They were coming to my house. I put you on. Disney comes and signs us because of me. So now you want me out because of I'm Mexican? You know? And, and for years, bro, for years, not now, but for years, uh, I held that anger in for a long time, bro. For a long, long time. And in the interview, I, I believe what you're referring to is Soren Baker asked me, why didn't you ever address it to him? Because my actions weren't with words that were going to be with violence. And if I said things that were going to be hurtful, and sometimes there are certain things that you say that will last a lifetime, no matter how many times you say you're sorry. And I didn't want to say those words. Yeah, you said you had anger issues, and then you 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 defined your anger issues with what you just said right now. Um, I, that part of the interview, when I heard that, uh, shout out to that dude Soren Baker because I was listening to his his interview, and his interview is, uh, I mean, as a as an inner viewer um i like to listen to guys like you know him and yourself joe rogan uh joey coco diaz uh, uh a lot of cats i listen to bro and i, I you know it's a it's a, a delivery it's a but anyways it's a skill set you know um but when i was listening to him his was just so uh correct yes 
it was very his interview skill set was very correct you know uh the way he uh asked you a question the way he responded you know and then i just i thought about me and, and, and the way i do it i said man well i'm just kind of like on the fly i'm uh, maybe unorthodox, you know what I mean? Uh, um, you know, just uh, maybe I am not. People used to talk shit. They're like, fool, you suck at this, doing that. Woo, woo, woo. But I'm like, bro, we just having a conversation now. If you don't like the conversation, homie, get the fuck up out, you know, the conversation. But, um, ah, man, that, that, when I, anyways, back to what, what I'm sorry, I don't mean No, no, that. no, hold on. Somebody said, uh, Tony needs to relax, uh, drink a beer or something, relax and drink a beer. I actually, I haven't even drank. I am relaxed, but this is just how straightforward I am. A hundred percent. No, and that's what that's where, where why I brought up the way you your your uh your pitch your deliver is um a matter of fact speaking. You know, there's no bullshit. There's no gray area like you said. This is just, this is. I mean, this is the, the same conversation that we having right now. It's the same conversation we have on the phone. And when I when I'm texting you and we're texting each other, I hear your voice and your words, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, this is the homie right here, dog. You know what I mean? This is just this is this is you. This is your signature shit, dog. You know what I mean? And this is what brought. This is what puts you to the platform uh, with the with the Rhodium Radio, bro. Like you just you just told me initially, uh, you were just gonna fucking try it out, bro. And yeah. you didn't know that that shit just fucking blew up. That yeah. shit went, bro. You know, I, I, I didn't. I didn't expect to be there no more than two months. But you know what I did say? I said I'm gonna put money into it, and I'm gonna do it professionally because first of all, I want people to like what they see first. If they like it and look professional, then maybe they'll tune in. People have often asked me, you know, how do you get people to tune in? How did you get subscribers? How did you do this? How did you do that? Here's what I said: Look, bro, I didn't ever took no fucking speech class, bro. I don't even have a seventh grade. I mean, a, a, a junior high school diploma. I don't even have a high school diploma, okay? But I've learned to educate myself. Okay, now, say that to say this. So, uh, I told somebody, we just turned it on, we went live, okay? I just started talking shit, started talking music. I know, but how did you get people to tune in? And I just said, look, the only thing that I can gather from all, everything that I've done is that if they like you, they'll tune in. 100%. That's it. You can't, you can't buy that. You can't buy that. You know, just if, like people are buying fucking uh, followers on Instagram and shit. Followers, likes, and, and you and you can see who who. I mean, you you look at someone's post, you're like, oh shit, they got fifty thousand fucking followers, and then you look at their post, and they only got like a hundred likes, dog. You know, what I, I mean? I've seen people that have a hundred thousand followers and got like fifty eight likes. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, come on, bro, you're not fooling anybody. I mean, you you can't fake the funk in this. You cannot. People will see right through you. There's a lot of people, you know on the live chat that are watching right now that will see right through you and they will know you're fucking fake. 322 viewers right now. I mean, that's good for HUD stocks. Yeah. Straight up. We got the big dog right here. That's you know awesome, mean? man. Tony A, you know what I mean? Don't that's play awesome. with it. Don't play with it. Hey, but but to, to, uh, to digress real quick, my boy, um, back to that Soren Baker interview. Yes. You know, um, are you kind of like a passive aggressive individual or are 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 were you, do you I mean who raised you was you did your pops raise you did your mom raise you I mean you have a very like a uh, uh, reserved type of uh, 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 way about yourself you know like you don't put too much out there I mean when you were when that initially that situation happened you got high C Hayden on you like in your face low key saying nobody wants to see a Mexican like a lot of cats they pop off and they be like motherfucker if it wasn't for me homie like and you you more or less said that to him by yeah. saying hey you jumped on my mixtape but at, bro like you know what I mean a, a, a black dude discriminating on a Mexican like bro how low can you get you know what I mean uh, I know that's the past and I know how he has grown since then you know yes. and, and he, he maybe you guys I'm sure you guys have had conversations and I'm, maybe you've gotten some apologies you know um, I mean, I was listening to that, and I mean, I was just like, fuck, Tony, what the fuck, dog? That's some bullshit right there, you know? Because you were telling, uh, uh, um, you know, you were telling different stories to this dude, Soren Baker, and, and you had also said that uh, he, on the second album, he wanted to do it on his own, and then the fucking record label was like, hey, they called you up and they said, hey, this fucking album is fucking shit. We need you back. And you're like, man, you know, and you, 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 that you've got a number, you got your money, you know, and you're like, all right, I'm willing to come and fucking fuck with this album, but that dude don't need to be in my motherfucking, uh, uh, studio. in the studio. Right. You, you know, like, I mean, the, 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 bro, like that, 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 that basically 
it, it, it defines to this day, I think, bro, in the music industry. I don't think much has changed since then, bro. No. You know, I don't think much has fucking changed, bro. I think the fucking, the, the shit is tainted, bro. You know, like, I, I, when I was doing underground hip-hop shows, Hong Kong, uh, 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 Second Street Jazz and Downtown LA, all these fucking just small fucking venues and shit, and, and, and these, you would have Tool Short come through, you'd have all these cats that come through, but they're coming through because they're on their downward, they're on their downward spiral of, they're not on the top no more. Right. You know, they're older, there's new artists, you know what I mean? And now they want to come fuck with us. Why? Because a lot of these cats are going to open up for these dudes, are going to sell ticket sales, and those ticket sales are going to pay this dude to perform, you know what I mean? And, and, I say, and I used to be like, you know what, man, fuck these fools, dog. You know what I mean? We don't fucking need them. You know, the only reason they're coming back down is because they're on their downward fucking spiral, and now they need these motherfucking Mexicans to fucking whoop the whoop, and they're showing this fucking fake love. Like, I've, I've, I've said that since fucking day one bro i feel to this and i'm not trying to be fucking like prejudiced or anything like that but i feel to this day like if the rasa fucking black balls that fucking music and they support their fucking own then maybe they'll let some motherfuckers through the door dog and give motherfuckers some respect bro in the industry amen everybody <laughs> say on the live chat amen you know, you know first of all i'm going to say something to all the people watching right now that first of all i want to thank you for for tuning in, I want to thank you for those that have subscribed to, uh, you know, Rodian Radio and Hoodstock's podcast. Because without you, I'm just gonna flat out and say it. You know what? We ain't shit. Without you, we would just be, you know, smoking a cigarette and me drinking a monster by ourselves. So we want to thank you guys for um, tuning in and allowing us to speak our minds. And maybe you guys can learn a little bit of something about this industry or just learn something about about us as well. For an example. Um, you asked me a question, you know, who raised me? That's a very good question because nobody has ever asked me that. Both of my mother and my father were from Torreón, Coahuila, Mexico. Five brothers, four sisters. Half of my family was born in Mexico. From my, the sister above me down, we were born here. So maybe like five of us were born here, okay? That's a big family. Yes, and, and um, I have to say that growing up, I don't ever remember spending quality time either with my father or with my mother by ourselves or together, just me and my mother and my father, you know. There's so many of you guys. There's so many of us. So yeah. if anything, I would have to say that maybe it was my mother that I spent my most time with. I, uh, um, my mother was my best friend. I was like pretty much the only child that I would see my mother sitting on the couch watching her, no her novelas. And I would go and I would lay on her lap. She would scratch my head, put me to sleep, always tell me, you know, do, do, do you want something to eat? Get a scalos, unos tacos orado, whatever. I love. Yeah. And yeah. my mom was a very, very passionate woman. She had a lot of compassion for people and always helped people. So I believe that I received that. You got that, yeah. And for me to, look, I have more years behind me than in front of me. 100%. Okay. So while I'm still here, I want to be able to help our people. But here's what I want in return, no money. Here's what I want in return, that you do the same for somebody else. So that the doors continue to open up for our people. Pay it forward. Yes. Not so that we can close the door like other Chicano rappers have done in the past. They get in that door and they close it and they want everybody to pay homage to them. You know what I all I want is for you to surpass everything that I have ever accomplished. That's what I want. I don't just want to be remembered. Oh, that was Tony. No, there needs to be a million Tony A's or you know what I'm saying? There needs yeah. to be a million of us out there, if to, not more. To get us where we need to be at. Exactly. Elevate us. And, and you know? that's what I look forward to. Now, as far as the high C thing, uh, yeah, the, the second album, uh, I wasn't on the cover. I produced six songs on there. Uh, I was told by a record executive. I still remember her name, but I'm not going to put her on blast. And um, rumors were that he was fucking her. So yeah. she, she came up to me. She said, hey, you know what? Um, he wants to do this record all by himself. He wants to be his own artist. And I said, okay. She said, but we're still going to give you work. They still gave me work, and they still paid me and all this stuff. This is with that uh, Hollywood Records? Hollywood Records is owned by Disney. Just like uh, Touchstone Pictures is owned by Disney. Disney owns a lot of shit. Fucking Disney, man. Yeah, so um, they they give him like 
if I'm correct, like $240,000, and he spent it all. And the album wasn't even done, and the stuff that he turned in, they told me in their words that it was garbage. Now, but I have to give him a little bit of credit, and I'm going to tell you why. Because he never told me, I don't want you. But what happened was he told the label, and the label told me. He didn't have the balls to tell you, bro. So they called me up, and they told me, hey, listen, uh, we want you to do some tracks. We want you at least six tracks. And I named my number, and I said, I want 60000 and I want to sell uh, my publishing. I want to sell my writers. And I want another 60000 And uh, I don't want nothing to do with that record because and I knew since there was no chemistry there, the record wasn't going to go anywhere. It was just going to flop. You know, and it did just that. But I walked away with money. Because, I, yeah, I remember on that interview, bro, and I, and I hate to keep on going back to an interview while we're doing an interview, but, and, and I wish I didn't watch this interview, but I, I, I said, you know what, I got Tony A coming on. Um, let, me, let, me just, let, me, let me dive into the mind of this man uh, outside of his podcast, you know, someone else talking to yeah. him. And, and I was instantly like, bro, I, I listened to all two hours of it, bro. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really good like that. If something fucking, uh, uh, if it intrigues me, uh, it, it captures my, my, uh, uh, my imagination, my mind, my everything, you know what I mean? I, I feel like I'm just sitting in on that conversation. I'm the third, I'm, I'm third will, you know? And and it and it really it it really did, dog. And it, and it, and I and I felt like it really just like it fucked you up, bro. Like you, you know, the situations that you talked about being in. You know, uh, you talked about several situations. That was one of them. You know, uh, um, he didn't want the Mexican to be on the cover. People don't want to see a Mexican on the cover. You know what I mean? What the fuck's a Mexican? You know what I mean? Uh, the fucking Mexican is the L.A. culture. Mexican is, you know, the reason why you dress in the way you dress and ba 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 whoop whoop whoop. Like we, you know, the there's so many styles for days. You know what I mean? That we've passed on to the brothers. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, the real ones will, will acknowledge it. You know, I mean, the fake ones won't. But but I just I felt like it. And, and then you sat in meetings, and they thought you were going to be black. You know what I mean? And they, they 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 were looking for tone instead of Tony. You know? Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and 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 I felt just like, damn, dog, is this? Because I had a question for you, dog. And my question was, bro, is like, what the fuck happened, bro? Like you were on top of the world. You know, as one of the a pioneer, the first one of the first fucking Mexican fucking DJs, bro, producers to fucking be on top of the game. I mean, this is in the beginning when the shit was all started. You had Easy E, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre was fucking putting you up on game. You said it was crazy the way he worked that drum machine and shit, yeah. dog. It blew your mind. He gave you fucking tips. You know what I mean? I mean, I would think that that alone would have just taken you on such a fucking wild ride. But I, I really felt when I heard your interview, bro, that that the the the, the negatives really discourage you from moving forward. Yeah, um, somebody brought this up to me. Actually, I met somebody on the street one time, and somebody had recognized me, and he said, um, hey, are, are you Tony A? And I lied to him, and I said, no, nah, that's not me. Saw the guy again, uh, uh, meeting at the store in the neighborhood, and obviously he knew because we're from the same neighborhood, but I just didn't know who that guy was. So he came up to me again. He goes, hey, man, are you sure you're not Tony A? He would see me again. And I was like, dude, I don't know who in the hell you're talking about, bro. But all right. So I don't know if he lived close by because maybe about a month later, he sees me. We run into each other again at the same time. So this time, he looks like he's out of breath. He's been running. And he, I come out and he goes, I want to ask you something, man. He goes, are you sure you're not Tony A? And I said, I'm sure. So he pulls out a cassette. And he goes, so this is not you? And I said, okay, that's me. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> so here's what happened. We sat down at a bus stop uh, bench. And he goes, I just want to talk to you, man. He said, you're from my neighborhood. I just want to talk to you. Can you give me the time? And I just said, fuck it. Let's go. We sat down right there. And he interviewed me just one-on-one. -on -one, and he told me this. And he made me think. He said this. You, you had Easy e You've had Dr. Dre. You've had... Uh, um, Ice Cube, you've had, you know, there was another guy, keyboardist named L.A. Dre. You've had all of these legends, Young MC, Tone Logue, J.J. Fad, all come to your house here in the hood. And then he says this, how many other Mexicans or how many other people in the world can say they've had that these, uh, uh, Dre being a billionaire now, come to your house? Yeah. And I thought about it and I said, yeah. He goes, so you were there when they recorded the records? And I said, well, I can't say that I was there every day, but the majority of the time I was. 
and I would always say thanks to Steve Yano, the Japanese man who was my manager. He was the one that introduced me to those cats and got those guys to come come down. So it just wasn't because of me, but I got to know those guys because of him. So that was my connection. I always give credit, okay? So then he says, and then you guys go on and form what we call the Scandalous Crew, DJ Quick, Second to None, AMG, High C, all gold and platinum artists. He said, so you were a part of two iconic duels or groups, the NWA, which I don't claim NWA because I was never part of it. I, I need to make that clear. But I was there is what I'm saying. I did mixtapes. Can no, no, nobody else, and I challenge people, nobody else say that they did the mixtapes with all of those guys. Not one. And I'm not talking about one or two or three. There's a collection of like 80, bro. There's a collection of them. So if you have that kind of mixtape done in the 80s, then we could talk about it. Until then, give credit where credit is due. So and then he says, Give the man his fucking roses, his flowers. What do you like? You like tulips? <laughs> no, I just fucking yeah. you, dog. <laughs> so, um, masapan, you know, it has the rose right there on the masapan. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so um, and he goes, and then you're a part of the quick crew. He goes, you should have catapulted. You should have taken off. What happened? Yeah. Now, here's my answer. Same question I just asked you. Yeah. And I thought about it. And I said, because up to that point, I had received more bad than good. And I'm not talking about the money, but not being accepted. Being a young 20-year-old, uh, it was hard for me to accept that this was a black industry and I was on the outside still looking in, signed to one of, if not the biggest co company in the world. And I felt like I was still an outsider. So you know what I would do? Take a couple of years off. That's the God's honest truth. That's the God's honest truth. And then here's what I did in 1996. I come back. I probably left like a 94, took like two years off. Met Mellow Man Ace. Okay, I had already known Mellow again uh, from the past. Uh, hooked up with Mellow. 1996, I started producing his album. And I'm giving you a very long story short how I, we teamed up. Yeah. Uh, Mellow had really nothing going on. And I love and I have respect for Mellow. But I have to say, in the situation that he was in, he didn't, nobody was working with him. I took him on and said, let's work together, man. You know, I know who you are. You know, I recognize what you've done. Maybe other people don't, I mean, but I, I want to work with you. That's Sand Dog's brother. Yes, Sand Dog's brother from Cypress Hill. So I start working with them. Now I start working with Chicano rappers. Little Rob, Slow Pain, AOT, Nino Brown, Kid Frost, JV. And I have to state that because many people today in 2020 say, where were you when Chicano rap was at its prime? First of all, when do you think Chicano rap was at its prime? I would ask him that. And by you saying in its prime, are you saying it's past its prime? I was working with guys that had laid down the foundation for Chicano rap. You know, before you guys were ever even rapping, most guys today that say they were Chicano rappers, most guys, not all, here's what they'll say. Well, I started rapping in 2005, 2010. When do you consider Chicano rap at its prime? Yeah. You know? So I, I mean, work with. I mean, have they? Have they? Is there? A, I mean, can you? Well, I mean, is there an actual year that we can, we can say there was a prime in Chicano rap? I, I would probably say this. This is my best guess for me. Other people can disagree, but this is just me. Um, when we talk about gold and platinum records, it's all throughout the nineties, starting with the, with the Frost, starting with uh, Lighter Shade of Brown, and we could just well, start AOT, Mellow Man Ace. We could just go go on. To me, it was all the 90s. I believe that that was not only the foundation, but as big as it got, okay? Now, people may differ because they'll say, well, I made a gang of money. I'm not talking about that. Here's my thing. And once again, people will differ on me, and I get it. Where where are the Chicano Drakes? Where are the Chicano uh, Little Wings? Where are the Chicano Kanye West? Where are the Chicano Games? Where are the Chicano Snoops? I've asked people like this on my podcast, and here's the biggest they got. No disrespect to this person, but much love, much respect, and power to this person I'm about to mention. The, but the biggest person they'll mention is say, oh, well, Little Rob. Little Rob has never been on Good Morning in America. Little Rob has never performed at the, uh, uh, um, uh, in New York, Times Square. Little Rob has never been on The View. We're talking about on that type of platform. Yeah. We haven't gotten there yet. But yet, in just California alone, we as Chicanos are hip-hop's economy. 
We, we buy tickets. We buy the music. We buy the downloads. That's what I'm talking about. If you blackball that other side of the market, you just focus, stop hating on our own and shit. You know what I mean? Put that money over here and shit. Maybe it will give motherfuckers respect and it will give motherfuckers right of passage. Uh, the, the key to crack the door open for a couple motherfuckers to sneak in that motherfucker dog. But to this day, bro, I mean... I. <laughs> I, I really, I really like what we're doing with music to this day right now. Yeah. The the youngsters, the, you know what I mean, and 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 some of the young OGs too, like you know Bodachi and and, mm -hmm. and fucking uh, 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 um homie that's uh, other homie that's been on here. Few of the homies, dog. You know what I mean? I mean, the, we are making really good music right now, dog. I think we're doing really good music. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of, I'll be a 1,000% with you, I wasn't a big fan of Chicano rap in the 90s, bro, you know? Right. I was bumping the Easy es I was bumping the fucking Dre's, I was the Ice Cube. And homie. we all were. Yeah, that, I mean, that was my shit, dog. A lot of times, cats would jump in my fucking ride, my boy. I mean, I've always loved the lighter shade of brown. I, I, <laughs> I told my coworker, my coworker is uh, 30 years old, bro, you know what I mean? And uh, he goes, what you gonna do this weekend and shit, you know? And and I I, I don't know how deep uh, of his knowledge is with uh, uh, you know hip hop, you know. And I said I got the I got this homie uh, Tony A the Wizard coming through. And he goes, oh shit, high C, high C Tony A. And I go, yeah. And I go, you know, you, I, you know about him, thirty year old dude, right? right you know. Right. And he goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, fuck, that's fucking dope, dog. You know what I mean? Thank you. Um, um, but but it it, it kind of it, it tripped me out though, dog. This thirty year old dude. I mean, you know, this a lot older than some of the youngsters out there, but it's younger than me. I'm forty three. You know what I mean? And and I so I was like, all right, that that, that you. I mean, you're known, bro. You know what I mean? So there's uh, uh there's certain cats, dog, that 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 paved the way, like yourself, lighter shade of brown, and 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 so. On and so forth dog but um it was I, so i always liked that bro because there were there was those classics you know you had to sit in the park with you and high c and and yeah. uh you know i'm not your puppet yeah i'm not your puppet bro those were fucking bangers off the rip dog those were fucking i mean those are the only fucking uh, you know what i mean the backyard boogies you know what i mean in, in in my hood holland park and shit those are the only uh chicano songs that were getting played bro you know what i mean those commercial fucking hits right, right. you know what i mean but rather than that like a lot of the uh chicano shit like with me and my homies that i fuck with dog like we just we were like man we want to need that gangster shit. You know right, what I mean? Of course. You know, we need that gangster shit, dog. Um, so a lot of Chicano rap wasn't wasn't played. Not saying that it wasn't gangster. Maybe that's my bad. That was our bad. Maybe that was our uh 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 immaturity of of or what we are raised on to to know that hey you know we need to support our fucking own like maybe we were being fucking like low-key fucking hating on our own because you know when it comes to fucking rasa dog like motherfuckers like i when you i remember when i would do shows bro you know what i mean uh, uh like you i'm from a hood there's cats from different hoods right there yeah. you know and they would hold the back wall up strong bro and, and, and it would it'd be hard to get a fucking nod, head nod out of some of them hard motherfuckers, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, homie, like, damn, bro. Like, like homie, like, like, oh, that fool ain't about that life. He ain't hard. Woo -woo. Like, they, you know, who knows what's going through their head that they're not uh, fully supporting, opposed to if it was a black rapper up there, then they would be just like, you know what I mean? That's my shit right, right there, dog. Come on, homie. You know what I mean? Doing the gangster glide and all that shit, bro, you know? But, uh... What I loved that came out, and I was I, I was at the Doctor Green Thumb uh, birthday bash, uh, House of Blues. I believe it was '98, bro. You okay. know what I mean? Uh, Doctor Green Thumb's uh, B row from Cypress Hill brought out Psycho Realm, dog. You know what I mean? And when I heard Psycho Realm, bro, I was like, "This is my shit right here, dog. This is the shit that I've been waiting for, bro." You know what I mean? So I guess uh, that 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 tells you a little of the taste. Of the style of music that I like, yes, dog. Yes. You, you know what I mean? I like that rough shit. I like that street shit. I like that fucking dark shit, dog. Same, same here. Yeah. I love it all. I've been selling records since I've been 11 years old, so I listen to all kinds of music, whether it be classic rock, uh, even punk rock, ska uh, music, new wave, too. whatever. You know, I, Black I love Sabbath. It all. Of course. <laughs> all that shit. I would just bump on fucking Paranoid by Black Sabbath, you know, uh, uh, yesterday at the gym. <laughs> I, dude, I, I, I love that shit, bro. Oh, I love that shit, too. I, I'm a huge fan of The Doors. Everybody oh, that knows my me. G, look what we got right there. We got Doors albums back there, dog. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah we got That's Doors right. albums, bro. Doors, uh, I love Prince, bro. So I, I listen to a, a lot of shit. But now, let me say something about uh, as far as I want to thank Soren Baker, and I'll tell you why. Because when he called me for an interview, he tells me like this. 
I want to shine light on something that most people don't know, and I knew about you in Maryland, because that's where he's from. Okay. And I'm thinking, man, I did those songs in my fucking bedroom in my neighborhood, and they reached all the way to Maryland. That's always still shocking for me, okay? Uh, because something that I was just doing for a mixtape, and then later on it comes out on fucking vinyl. You can buy the Music Plus, Sam Goody's, Tower Records, you know, Warehouse, whatever, okay? He hits me up, and he goes, I want to interview you. I said, okay, let's do it. He sits down, and he tells me, first of all, when people usually talk about you or introduce you, here's what they say. He's high C's DJ. Yeah. He goes, and that's all they say. 100%. He said, you should start getting that cleared up. He said, you were high C's, not only mixtape guy, you put him on, but he got signed because of you, and you produced that whole fucking record, you know? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but I always just settled. And he said, but don't you want to get your credit, you know? And then before we, this was before we went live, you know? And I was like, no, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. So from that point on, I started saying, you know what? No, I just wasn't his DJ because he could have gotten anybody, you know? But I produced that record. And that's a, that's a big motherfucking difference. It ain't a DJ that's playing something, someone else's music. It's a DJ that's playing his motherfucking music. And if it wasn't for his motherfucking music, your music, you know what I mean? Then this motherfucker wouldn't be on the motherfucking limelight getting all this fucking shine and shit, dog. So on the fucking Jerry Curl, Wet Curl motherfucking music video, this motherfucker better be, he better have a motherfucking Jerry Curl too, you know what I mean? Dripping more than your shit. I'm exactly. just saying though, dog, you know what I mean? All good, brother. All hey, good. check it out, dog. I need to get you a drink. Can I get you a drink right now? You think so? Yeah, can I get you a drink? Can I get a moment of your time? Can I get a moment of your time? One drink, my G. Yes, go for Cause it. Because I know you got shit to do after this, dog, but yeah. let's start the second half of this, bro, with a drink. I have more questions for you, bro. You know, I mean, it just blows my mind when I, I, I go through the Scandalous album, bro, and I hear these fucking, these breaks, these beats, these samples, these fucking, like, you really gotta, like, I just, I, I, I just recently listened to that whole album all over again, bro, and and and, and I just, I, I got Homeboy's voice out of it, bro. I was just hearing the, the, the instrumentals, the music, the beats, the samples, the scratches, the cuts, the, I was like, Damn, dog. Like, this is why they call this dude the wizard. This shit, bro, to this day, homie, you can put them same beats out there, dog, and them motherfuckers will hit, bro. Yeah, yeah. Those fuckers will hit, dog. So I'm going to leave you with this while I go get you a drink and myself a drink, bro. Why what, do you, can't, what do you want me to say? You want me to address some of these questions? You, Yeah, address some of those questions while, while I go get us a drink. Okay. Address okay. some of those questions. Tony doesn't have have a do so he can't drink uh you know what somebody put saca la bolsita too much racism no it's not racism you know here's my thing if we can't talk about it you know without somebody getting offended you know people have get, been getting offended since day one and i've all, often said this on uh my podcast that you know that we should be able to be able to practice our constitutional right to be have freedom of speech we live in a society that Claims they don't give a fuck, but are so easily offended, and that's where we're at today. So all I'm asking is that allow us to speak how we feel. Um, there's people on TV or people on social media that are constantly addressing, you know, uh, how they're being discriminated against, how they don't have enough rights, how police are killing them. But the moment that we begin to speak about ourselves, people get offended. We should be able to have that same right to be able to speak for ourselves, to be able to stand up for ourselves, and to be able to back somebody up of our own nationality. You know, for somebody were to ask me, you know, what race you are, well, first of all, let me say this. Um, there's only one human race. We're talking about nationalities, but yeah, you know what, hold on, let me see. Somebody just said, hey, Tony, you still produce beats, foo? No, foo. And I'll tell you why I don't produ uh, produce beats for. P produce beats, the reason simply being is because I'm not going to pay or get paid $25 for a beat. People today want to pay 25, 30 bucks for a beat. That's unheard of. I mean, that's not even, that's not even money for gas. You know, I used to charge the homie special in the hood back in the day was 800 bucks. And they still had to pay for studio time for, they still had to pay for uh, um, two inch reels. They still had to pay for engineers. They still had to pay for musicians. So for me to do beats for 25 bucks like i'd rather just not do beats anymore honestly so let me see um uh let me see 
Hey, Tony, you still a mija. You know, like, I'm not even going to address that one. So, But I just wanted to read it to give that guy his little two seconds of fame. Stand with your raza, 25 for your beats. What the fuck? Yeah, 800 is a good deal. Yeah, I agree with you. Th thank you, brother. Yes, thank you. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see, Tony. Why do you block people on Rodeo and Radio, but you talking about getting easily offended? I'll tell you why I blocked, and I have blocked people on Rodeo and Radio because when you try to attack my family, I just don't want to see it. I just don't want to hear it because you have a bunch of cowards on there that hide behind a fake name, a fake profile, but yeah, you're talking about you want to be real and you're hiding behind a fake name and a fake profile. And you want people to be real with you when you're not even being real with you. And then you've had people, some of them have been Chicano rappers. And he needs to be thankful that I don't fucking call his name out. Okay? Some of these guys have blasted and talked about not only my children, but also my grandbabies. And that's off limits, man. So if you get offended because I blocked you, because I'm protecting my family, then you know what? Get offended. Honestly, I don't really care. But I'm not going to let you guys go there. So... I answered that question. You know what, dog? I've, I've uh, in the beginning of the, of, of uh, uh, my journey with this podcast. <laughs> salute, I, salute, my G. Yes, sir. This is that. Take a drink of that, dog. Tell me what you think. Drink a little, hey, smoke a little. This is that Buffalo Trace right here. I, you know what? I so I was listening to fucking uh, Joe Rogan. He had uh, Joey Coco Diaz on there, and 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 uh, Joey Coco Diaz was like, "Fucking Joe Rogan, what the fuck is this in this fucking cup?" You know, and uh, and you know Joe Rogan. You know, he's like, "Oh, this is Buffalo Trace, man. It's a whiskey. They've been around since fucking eighteen. Whoop de whoop whoop and this and that. You know." And he goes, "Fucking Joe, this is fucking delicious. You know, if I didn't have to fucking drive, I would have fucking had about drank half this fucking bottle. You know." So I'm like, "All right, Buffalo Trace. Let's see what I'm about to." whiskey you know i'm a jack and coke dude and uh I, I thought this buffalo trace was gonna and this isn't there's not sponsor me i'm giving them a shout out but i thought this buffalo trace was gonna be expensive bro you know and it's actually only like 25 dollars a bottle but anyways uh that's what we're drinking tonight uh uh diet coke and buffalo trace now when you're at the bar it's hard to ask for a diet coke <laughs> let me get a diet coke and a whiskey like bitch <laughs> just drink a coke no but anyways uh yeah um so, anyways, what I was what I was getting at, I I, I kind of I get sidetracked sometimes because I'm a little okay. excited because I got the big dog right here, and I'm I'm, ex I'm just an excited person, dog. When it comes to this, because I'm just full of fucking just like energy, good energy these days. And dog. I'm having fun, bro. Yes, I'm, sir. I'm, I'm really having fun. Thank you, know? you brother. I, I, I want to answer something really, really quick. Go ahead, do it. Because uh, you asked me about, um, I guess my personality. You know, I'm a very matter of fact type of person. You said, okay, yes, sir. I was a teenager. I want to say maybe I was 19 or maybe 20, somewhere around there. And uh, I was challenged with a question that I read in a book. And, and I want you guys to challenge yourselves as well, you know, because we can lie on social media and make ourselves look like we're fucking paid and we're fucking living large. But when we look in the fucking mirror, that mirror is cold-blooded. It'll tell us the truth every fucking time. Bitch, you ugly. Okay. <laughs> hey, when it tells me that. No. <laughs> so I, I read something where it says... Um, if you were to follow a leader, like somebody that to lead you in life, what would you want that person? What kind of qualities, what kind of morals, what kind of a, a personality would you want? And they had blanks in there. And I, I remember I put on there somebody that has morals and, and uh, somebody that uh, is a very, like what you said, very matter of fact, but I put somebody that's very straight out, somebody that's not going to lie to me, somebody that's strong, somebody that's tall, somebody that I can follow, somebody that I can brag about, somebody that shows love, somebody that's always willing to show, uh, to have peace with people, to make things right. And I put somebody that's quick to say, I'm sorry. Who? that's me, dog. Okay. And I put all of these things. I mean, it's the sorry part. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. All of these things, okay. And when I turned the page, the answer was right there. And it said this, see that within yourself. 100%. So now, here's my thing. I don't ask anybody to follow. Please, I don't want my words to be misused. But if I can be a good example to point the way, that's all I want to be. I just want to be a voice. That's all I try to do, dog. Amen to that, dog. You know what I mean? I, I, try, to, I try to be a, a positive voice, bro. 
because for so many years I was a I was a negative energy, negative voice. Um, a lot of my homies or ladies didn't want their dude right. hanging out with me because I was trouble, you know. And they see me to this day, and they're just like, "Fucking lucky!" Like, how the fuck? Who is that lucky? Like this? Right. Like, bro? Like it's it's energy, it's uh, vibrations in the earth, you know. Um, I am rewriting my uh, legacy, you know, because my legacy was going to go out as a, just a, a womanizer, uh, an abusive person, uh, somebody that was very angry. You know, a lot of my young homies would be like, oh, that fool's fucking always angry, ba ba ba, popping off, whoop, 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 and, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was that, you know what I mean? But I wasn't in the uh, right, I wasn't in a stable mind. I wasn't raised in a stable family hold. Like, you, you I mean, you, you, you spoke on being able to just lay with your mom while she's watching a novella and, and she would, you know, she would pat your head and me, oh, you know what I mean? What do you want to eat? You know, ba ba ba. Whoop, that love and affection was missing out of my life. You know what I mean? And it took me so many years. I was so angry for so many years that I, I just had to, uh, I had to reinvent myself or I had to find myself. I had to, like, I looked in that mirror that you talked about. And every time I looked in that fucking mirror, man, I fucking hated hated what the fuck I saw. Like I tried committing suicide one time, you know what I mean? And and by the grace of God, the neighbor Myrna came in and she gave me five Seroquils before I fucking did it. I was gonna fucking off myself with a fucking 380 and shit, you know? And she gave me five Seroquils and fucking all of a sudden I said, blah, blah, and I called her up, I said, hey Myrna, what the fuck you mean, man? I mean, I was fucking slurring and shit and it fucking laid me the fuck out and I woke up and my piss, you know what I mean? Because I fucking, I guess in the middle of that shit, I oh, got up, I pulled my dick out and I fucking pissed all over my fucking living room and I pissed on my fucking self and I was a fucking mess, bro, you know what I mean? And that's just another uh, uh, piece of a chapter in my life that I, I think about to this day, everything reflect, reflect on what we've done wrong, reflect what we can change because if you are in control of yourself, we can, you can make those changes within yourself, you know what I mean? Like I was fucking, uh, you know I mean, I was so high, strong and just fucking off the fucking, just off the top, just too fucking much, not only for the people around me, but for my fucking self, you know what I mean? And somehow, some way, um, this podcast has given me, as well, has been therapeutic for me. You know, it's, it's, it's helped me to reflect on myself and realize who, like I always ask myself, like, man, why you take the homie? Why is he dead? Why is this fool doing life? Why am, still, am, I, why am I here? Like, we're always looking for a purpose, a purpose within ourselves. I, I mean, I, through this life, through this podcast, through the moves that I've made since I've been out, of my last time being incarcerated, I finally found peace within myself. Like I look in the mirror and I'm like, fucking luck, you the, you the man, dog. Get your ass to work for you tired, dog. Get your ass to work, feed them babies, homie. Be good to the ones around you, you know what I mean? I mean, what you, the, 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 what you reflect upon the people around you is, the, is what you will give back, you know what I mean, in exchange, you know what I mean? So I really, really try to make this a positive, podcast dog a yes. positive platform dog i don't gotta fucking act like i'm hard bro i don't gotta fucking act like whoop de whoop whoop because i did that for so many fucking years bro around a bunch of fucking animals that we everyone's trying to be harder than the next man fucking each other's bitches you know what i mean just fucking being fucking savages dog and i don't want that no more i don't live like that no more when anybody that's around me it's got to be on a family fucking level dog you know what i mean like 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 i know we just met bro but if you ask me dog like tch, homie you you the big bro dog you the big bro now dog you know what i mean I, I i i i i i look i look up to you and i and i and like obviously i've studied you a little bit you know you're a matter of fact type of way like i've 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 you know what i mean uh uh i've i've, I've just th i've thought about you and been like you know this dude uh you know, this dude is, is like, I never had that father figure. You know I mean? I'm not saying you, I'm looking for a father figure, but I'm just saying, like, if you don't have that father figure, you look at different things that different men fucking bring and they put and you pick and choose on shit. It's like, hey, you know what? I like that. That yeah. works. That 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 works for me. Maybe I can implement that in my in my personality, in my daily life. You know what I mean? Um, um, so that's a reflection of what I try to do with this fucking podcast is I try to... Uh, uh, um, you know, put put forth a positive 
uh, uh, energy, a positive movement, something uh, that people haven't got to this level, not that I'm on a high level, but that they can get to, yeah. you know, yeah. mentally. Well, one thing that people, I always encourage people that we have a voice and we need to use it. Stop waiting for somebody to, uh, if you will, pick up the torch so you can follow. You know what? Pick up your own torch. And I say that as, not as discouraging, but as to encourage you because we need more platforms like this. I always encourage people, start your own platform, let our voice be out there and be heard, but let it be something positive, not just some bullshit, you know, something good that people can learn from, you know, so we need to use this technology because we didn't have this uh, in the <sighs> 80s and 90s. No. And I'm thankful that I'm still alive that we can use it because let's be honest, many of us have done so much dirt that we should have been taken out a long time ago, but it was only through God's grace and God's mercy that we're still here, you know? So whatever I can do right now while I'm still here to help someone, that's what I want to do. That's all I want to do is just shine light on people. People may consider you a nobody. You know what? All I ask is something simple. Submit your music, short bio, give us time to get to it and you'll be on. 100%. That's all. Don't take offense to it. Don't fucking uh, 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 pull that trigger too quick with your fucking uh, crazy ass fucking temper and shit. You know what I mean? And fuck yourself off from a future fucking uh, interview or what whatnot. But this is a perfect segue by the grace of God. You know what I mean? Um, you, we had conversations off off air, yes. uh, through phone, um, through text, um, that you have taken your spiritual level to another level in regards to schooling. Yes, yes. Um, let me share what Lucky is saying. We had a conversation one time um, and I was talking to him about educating yourself and I believe it's very, very important uh, to educate yourself. I mean, cause that's the only way we're ever gonna get through doors, education, okay? So I said earlier that I didn't have a junior high school education. I was I never applied myself, so I never knew if I could ever be smart. I was too busy ditching and breaking into people's houses. Uh, I never went to prison, but you know what? I went to a juvenile hall and I went to county jail, but I learned my lesson there. So first of all, I want to say I thank God that I never went to prison. A lot of people, um, and not to say anything negative. There's people that say it was a waste of time. I wish I would never would have went. And then there's the other people that brag about it, yeah. that brag about it. Like if it's a strike, if, if that's you, then all good. But I thank God that I never went because I know that it would have hurt my mother. My brother did almost uh, 11 years and it killed my mother. It killed my mother because she loved all her kids equally. Okay. Now, uh, one day I had moved out. I was living over there. Um, I moved out for about a year. And the reason why I moved out for about a year was because I was living by the beach. And uh, that's pretty much where my journey began. Uh, I met this individual that um, I didn't know at the time was a, well, let me save that part. He was taking out his trash. And uh, he was stacking up books. He would take a, a bunch of books. So I was just intrigued by like, Look, this guy's throwing away. They look brand new, you know? It, it, this guy had polyester pants. He looked like he was still dressed in the 70s. Nice shirt with, with pencils hanging out of his pocket. He had glasses. Had an old Lionel Richie perm. White dude, you know? <laughs> Penny loafers, yeah. you know? And uh, he was stack, stacking up books. So as he went back inside, because the next day was trash day, I picked up one book, and it said Egypt. He said the history of Egypt. And I picked it up, and I was like, what the hell? I've always been into Egyptology. I've always... Whether it's the hieroglyphics, the cartouche, I just love the culture. So I picked it up and I heard him coming, so I threw it. So he grabbed, he comes back and he tells me, were you looking at that book? And I go, no. He goes, well, I didn't put it there. <laughs> and I said, okay, yeah, I was looking at it. And he said, picks it up and he goes, you like Egypt? And I said, yeah. And he said, what made you pick this book up? I said, I didn't know what book I was picking up, but I like Egypt. And he said, take this. He said, when you're done reading it, bring it back. Man, this was a thick ass book. I didn't know anything about it. I was just like, all right. In about a month. I brought it. I brought it back. Okay, and uh, I gave it to him, and he said, "I got another book for you." So he said, "Okay." He gives me a book, and it's ancient Assyria, another thick book. And I said, "Okay, that one I read in three weeks." Okay. Uh, after that, he gave me a book about Babylon. He gave me a book about Persia. He gave me a book about Greece. He gave me a book about Rome. And then after that, he invited me into his house. 
He invited me to his house and he had all of these books. And I've never shared this story before. Okay, at least not on a podcast. All of these books. And he had some boxes and he told me he was moving. So he introduced me to whiskey, Jameson, okay, and to dark beer and he smoked cigars. And I saw all of these plaques. Uh, um, uh, professor this, professor that, professor this. So I asked him, I said, why does it say, why do you have these? And he says, because I'm a professor. And I said, well, what do you teach at? He said, I'm a professor at USC. That's what he said. And I was like, really? He said, yeah, within these six months, I have given you a USC education. <laughs> That's what he told me. And I was like, wow. He said, uh, come on, I want to show you something. So he showed me books that he had from the 17, 1800s. And I was like, why? Wow. He goes, these books are worth, you know, a lot of thousands of dollars. And I said, wow. And I said, are you going to give me another book to read? And he said, um, yeah, I'm going to give you one book, a real old book. That's what he said. And I said, well, how old is it? Because I'm thinking money, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So he tells me this. Street, 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 street mentality. Yeah. So he, yeah. Te- he tells me, I'm going to give you a really old book. It's probably the oldest book that I have. And I was like, okay. This guy gives it to me. And I said, what's this? He, he turned it over. He didn't let me see the front. He goes, uh, uh, it's an old book. And I said, well, how old is it? He goes, it dates back to day one. The Bible. Yeah. So he turned it over. 1611 King James Bible. He saw my face and he said this, do not read it as a religious book. Read it as a history book. That's what he told me. He said, keep that in mind. All right. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put it down. I would say it probably took me about maybe two weeks, three weeks tops to read it all. The Bible. The Bible. King James Version. Yeah, and I'm not a religious guy, believe me. I'm not. So I brought it back to him, and uh, he was moving. That day he had everything packed up, and he said, come in. And I said, I, I brought you back uh, your book. And he goes, sit down. He says, um, what did you learn from it? And I was shocked because I even studied the index. I go, well, there's 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament, 66 books altogether, I said, and uh, – the Old Testament I read was written in Hebrew. So only certain portions were written in Aramaic, which is the Hebrew language, which is uh, Daniel and uh, some of the book of Ruth. And then the, the New Testament, that was written in Greek, which was the common language at the time. I said, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I read it, you know. Um, and he said, well, what stood out to you? And I said, well, one thing stood out to me. I said, and there was one thing that uh, Jesus said. And it was one of the hardest things for me to read because when I got to his teachings, I closed it and I said, and I cried. And he said, what did he say? And I said, love your enemies. And that was the hardest thing for me to do because I had so much anger in my life at that time. And he said, why was that hard? And I I, I explained to him and I I just said, "Um, because I can't. And he said, because only God can give you that love for them. And he said, I want you to keep it. And I said, okay. He goes, and I want you to continue to read it. No problem, okay. Then he shakes my hand. And he said, I'm going to leave now because I'm retired. I'm done. I'm going to go live in Wisconsin. So I told him like this. Well, let me have your number and we'll stay in touch. And he says, no. And I said, why? He said, because we were only meant to meet for a certain time. And that's where my education started. You know, I know people look at me. They think I'm dumb, but I'm not dumb. <laughs> so that's where pretty much everything started. I mean, I could break it down for you. I've learned it. You know, uh, I studied a little bit of the Hebrew language. I studied a little bit of the, of the uh, Greek language. I'm a little rusty. I, at one point, I could teach the Aleph Bet, which is the Hebrew alphabet. It was only 22 letters uh, in, during ancient Israel. Now they, they add uh, vowels. Back then, there were no vowels. That's why nobody could pronounce the name of God during the time of Moses. Well, Moses could, but people say Yahweh, but in reality, it was you hate vah It had no vowels in it. It had no vowels. Let me give you an example. Today, my name's Tony. The only vowel that we have is O in my name, Tony. So back then, they would have spelled a T-N-Y because they had no vowels, okay? So people today would have said, hmm, if we had a vowel right there, it's an I. Maybe it's tiny? No. If we had an A, maybe it's tiny? No. If we had an O, maybe it's Tony. So people don't know what name God gave Moses, Today, so you know what we do? We take the, the yud hey vav hey. we add vowels, and we come up with Yahweh. Yahweh. Some people say, no, it's Yahovah, where we get Jehovah from. 
but nobody knows the name of God that he gave Moses. So in English, we put, I am what I am. When Moses said, well, if I go to Pharaoh and I tell him, let my people go, who do I tell him sent me? I am that I am. That's all it was. So unless we have a recording, a cassette of Moses, when he said, you know, the name of God, we don't know how to pronounce the name of God. Wow. Now, God, in the beginning, when it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That word God is Elohim. That's just G-O-D. That's how we say it in, you know, Hebrew, Elohim. But uh, Jesus, obviously, during that time, some people would debate, is Yah uh, 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 Yeshua or Yahshua, people would debate. I don't debate. I don't care. Uh, from there, the Greek word would have been Iesus, where in Spanish we get the word Jesus. In English, we get Jesus. I've studied it. I know it. So it's going to take a lot for people to try to discredit it. But let me challenge the people that are watching right now. Because I know some people are probably saying this is all BS. Or the Bible contradicts itself. But I'm going to make a public announcement. They know where to reach me at gmail.com or they can reach me on Instagram or on Facebook. If you could find me one contradiction in the, in the scriptures, in the Bible, I will give you $100. But you have to prove it that it's a contradiction for every contradiction that you find in the Bible. Reach me and I will pay you. Yeah. Because I, I do believe that it's true. So so we've had individuals on here. We had recently, we had a discussion in regards to like, uh, uh, the true Israelites, uh, were they, uh, uh, we had an individual here saying the true Israelites are of melanated skin color. So uh, uh, they had to, uh, Jesus had to be black, so on so forth wow. i mean it, it was a, a a hot topic right here on hoodstocks uh, -huh. uh for a second a couple individuals shout out to the homies that were on here that spoke on that uh yeah. you guys uh, excuse me you guys know who i'm talking about i mean but just to, just kind of like uh just to throw this out there i mean was do you think jesus was black uh i'm not saying this to you but just in general does it really matter yeah for sure i, I mean does it really really matter because I know many people that would debate that Jesus was black and they don't even live according to the scriptures. So what's really your argument? What are you trying to prove? I mean, just to say that he was black? I mean, my mother was a very, very dark woman. My father would look like a white guy with blue eyes. Everybody thought that he was a white man, but he wasn't. But my mom had woolly, woolly hair and was very, very dark. Okay, now, let me say this. Um, the first Hebrew, the first Hebrew ever, was uh, Abraham, okay? Uh, um, he was from the land of Uz, not Oz, like the Wizard of Oz, but the land of Uz, from the Ur of Chaldean. And Abraham was called, and because he was faithful, God said, I would make a great nation out of you. When I say great, didn't mean like you were gonna be some great dude. It meant like number, number. Your descendants would be as if the, the, if you will, the sand of the, the beach or, you know what I'm saying, as of the stars. They're going to be forever, okay? Um, now, when Abraham went and had a son named uh, Isaac, okay? And when God promised them, um, it was 25 years later, Abraham was 100 years old, okay? Isaac had uh, kids. He had uh, uh, Jacob and Esau. Jacob ended up having 12 sons. That's where all the tribes come from, okay? Now, from there... Every Jew can trace their lineage back to Jacob's sons, who later on will be named, surnamed Israel, okay? Um, and I'm giving you a very, very long story short because I'm not trying to bore people, people thinking it's a, a Bible study, but I'm just trying to share with you. That's all. Yeah, no, it's, 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 shout out to the motherfucker that said that Lucky's still butthurt. I'm not still butthurt, bro. Um, but being the fact uh, Lucky uh, is heartbroken. No, Lucky's heart is not broken. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a, it was an interesting conversation, you know, and being the fact that this man right here, Tony A. the Wizard, has uh, spent X amount of uh, uh, hours, X amount of years studying uh, these history books, you know, it's just a question, you know what I mean? So, you know I mean, uh, just chill the fuck out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, well, watch out. Different, and then the man's perspective, that's all it is. You that's know? all it is. And you know what? But at the same time, uh, since you say I speak very, as a matter of fact, I, I challenge people, not as in a debate, but to prove me wrong what I'm saying, because all I'm doing is simply just sharing scripture. So now, back then, if you were from the tribe of Dan, you would be a Danonite. If you were from the tribe of... Benjamin, you would be a Benjamite. If you were a tribe from Levi, you would be a, Le a 
from Levi, a Levite. Today, uh, well, Jesus was the tribe of Judah, which means praise, okay? Uh, so back then, they called people that were from the tribe of Judah Jews. Only Jews were named from the tribe of Judah. Today, the temple, the, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. 37 years later, approximately, when Christ in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13 pretty much said that the temple will be destroyed. This was the temple, the most beautiful, biggest temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, where today all you see is ruins, and we have the Dome of the Rock right there, which is a, an Islamic mosque. Okay, Now, um, where was I going with this? Um, I'm sorry. It's all good. I lost though. my train of thought. Yeah. Because you know what? I, when I, when I, I start thinking ahead of myself. But now, anyways, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by Gen General Roman Titus. Okay. Here's what happened. The Jewish people were dispersed to the four corners of the earth, meaning it's north, south, east, and west. Okay. All genealogical records were lost. There's not one Jew today. Not one Jew can ever trace back. What, what tribe he was from. That far back. That far back. Yeah, they were lost, like you said. Yeah. This, this is why I do not believe in all this Ancestry.com stuff where you're sending your, 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 your DNA to the government and then they tell you who was your ancestors. If that was the case, then a Jew can do that, send it back. Hey, you were from the tribe of Levi. Hey, you were from the tribe of Judah. Hey, you... It doesn't, it doesn't go that far back. It goes back as far as... Uh, like 100 a year or something like that? Yeah, 100%. You know... Um, but what's what's the trip about it is so I did it. Okay. You know, I did it. And I mean, I, I feel like history is basically passed on by word of mouth. Yes. You know, I mean your ancestors oral tradition. Your family, uh, as everybody moving forward from generation to generation, they're told by their parents where they're from, ba ba ba. You know what I mean? Yes. So so let me let me lead up to what I'm saying is so all these generations have always have told me with my pops yes. where my pops was from. Now I went and did the uh, the ancestry.com right. and it concurs uh -huh. with what the information was passed down okay. to me, you know? Yes. So, I mean, that's all I can say, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, as as you're raised, the family's going to tell you where you're from. You know what I mean? Yes. You know, and that's just information that was passed down from generation to generation to generation. Yes. Thousands of years, you know? Um, I'm listening, brother. No, I'm just, I, I, I don't want to get too deep into this right here because it, uh, Tony needs a history podcast. He does. <laughs> That'd be dope. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah, this dude is fucking got it. <laughs> Lux, give the homie Tony another drink. Get a drink of that shit right here, homie. I mean, you get, you know, get your motherfucking, uh, uh, your, your whistle wet. Uh, I don't do <laughs> social media, bop, bop, bop. Shout out to the uh, tortas. And papusas, yeah. <laughs> shout out! Hey, shout out to everybody that's dropped a a, a, a fucking donation. I love you, motherfuckers. Yeah, thank you, most thank definitely. you, thank you so much. Uh, love, yeah. respect. Allow me to read something, and then we'll switch it up. Yeah, okay. let's do it. Okay, this is the Book of Revelation, chapter one, and this is one of the famous verses that people like to quote that Jesus was black. By the way, he was not black. Okay, I'm gonna say it, and whoever wants to have a discussion. We can have a discussion, but I'll tell you this. I will not argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you about it because to me, it doesn't really matter. But here's what they say. Uh, verse, starting at verse 12, and I'll just read it quickly. Then I, turn and, then I turned to see the voice that spoke to me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one, as the son of, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, girded about his chest with golden band. His head, um, his head and hair were white like wool and is uh, and white as snow, and his eyes were at flame fire. Here's what, here's the scripture. His feet were like fine brass as if refined in a furnace. So they say, look at his feet. His feet were black. It had to have been a black man. Okay, not to argue with you, but just to make a point. Let's go back to the verse before that. It says, his eyes like a flame of fire. So he's a black man with red eyes. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. John is talking figuratively speaking, okay? I've studied hermeneutics, and I'll end there. What is human? Hermeneutics is the study of how to interpret Scripture, how to properly interpret Scripture. And because a lot of people interpret it the way they want to interpret it, and they, 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 they passed uh, uh, this information that some of it is uh, can be misleading, right? Yeah. It, 
Um, and, and it, but it has people like it has uh, a lot of rasa, a lot of uh, African Americans thinking, oh, I'm, you know, what I mean, I'm the real truth. Like I had a discussion with a homie and shit, and I was just like, bro, check it out. If so, if say if uh, Jesus was black, if Jesus was black, say Jesus had a thing for Asian women, just <laughs> you know, figuratively speaking, you know, what I mean, he had right. an Asian thing, for, and and he had kids with an Asian woman, mm-hmm. and then his his sons had kids with Asian women, so on and so forth, moving down from generation to generation. And next thing you know it, black Jesus isn't looking black no more. They're just slanted eye Asian kids. Right. Who are the descendants of those kids? Right. Black Jesus. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what skin color you are. Right. You know, and, and that's just a point that I was, I feel like it's really a simple, uh, simple point to put across. Like, we, we don't know necessarily uh where because like you said a lot of that shit got erased we can't go that fucking far back bro right. you know who knows what we are but what, what we can do though is we can you know there's no such thing as i'm better than you i'm the chosen one you're not you're fucking isa or whatever the fuck the the, the converse, past conversations I, I, i've had with individuals you know let's just be fucking good people bro right i mean you know let's and, be good human beings man i mean ultimately does it really really matter to you that much you know what color he was honestly my mom was a very dark woman and i've said that already i've had black friends that came over and my mom was darker than them did that make my mother a black woman? Yeah. You know, share with you a story that um, happened in Compton. When my parents moved from Mexico to Compton, I lived in Compton until I was nine years old. till I was nine. So I've spent the rest of my life in my neighborhood, in my city, okay? And uh, we lived there. My mom used to sell Avon. She used to take me and my little brother on a little carrito, you know, a little car, selling Avon door to door. And every once in a while, she'll tell us, you know, I don't want you to go to school. I want you to stay with me today. Okay, so uh, so I would give her, you know, vitamin A, the vitamin B. She was a Avon, vitamin, Avon, uh, lotion, whatever. And uh, one day, some lady, a white lady, pulled up to her, and she said, hey, what are you doing? Do you have a license for that? My mother didn't know how to defend herself because she didn't speak English. So she would ask me, que dice Antonio? So I was somewhat her interpreter as a little kid. And I, and I remember just saying, she's not hurting nobody. We're just selling vitamins. And I would shake the little vitamin thing. Well, you guys don't have a license for that. Fucking Karen. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so my mother, all she said, it was like, okay, well, sorry. That's what she said. Yeah. And this w- white woman told my mother, get your fucking black ass out of here. Black people aren't the only ones that have ever been called black ass. Okay. 100%. I, I, I remember that. Okay. And there's a lot, a lot of other Mexican women that are very, very dark, bro. Yeah. You know, so how dark is dark that Jesus had to be in order for us to say he was black? You know, I don't know, but it's a fucking rabbit hole, bro. <laughs> it's a rabbit hole. It's 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 a, it's a crazy fucking conversation. We had a lot of people were fucking intrigued by it. You know, I mean, the numbers went up on that on those podcasts. You know what I mean? Right. But anyways, uh, moving forward uh, from from that right there, um, let's 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 open up any questions you guys have for uh, Tony A the Wizard right here. Can I get a moment of your time? Yeah, let's get some questions right here. You guys have have any questions? Ask if. Ask Tony if he will. So they were asked. I've seen this a couple of times. What okay. do you have with Blad TV, dog? What, what's do that? You have a, is there an issue that you have with Blad TV? No, I have no issue with Blad TV. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Um, I will. I will say this: that um, Blad interviewed, and I need you guys to go do your homework and call me on it if I'm wrong, please. Uh, I, I don't mind being corrected, and I would apologize if I'm wrong. But without saying any names. The two people that I can recall, unless I'm wrong, okay, to represent Chicanos on his show were not Chicanos. Be real. I, well, I mean, I feel like Be Real work really worked the system. You know, what I mean, he came. You know, what I mean, he's from a, 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 a Piru gang. 
you know, and then once he felt like he can grab the fucking uh, the, the, the Brown Brothers, you know, he, he worked them with a couple songs, Loco and, and this and that and the different songs that he's had. And I really I feel like he capitalized on the fucking uh, uh, on the homies and shit. Right. And I mean, on Mexicans. Right. Right. You know, um, but that's 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 an, another conversation. But but you know what? And I work with Be Real. I did shows with Be Real. But that's not even the guys I was even talking about. Uh, Got gotcha. you. That's, that's just down. what popped in my head. Cool. Yeah, that's Let me narrow it down without even mentioning names. These are Chicano rappers that were naming Chicano. So I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, Vlad, you want to reach out to Chicano rappers, but you grab the two guys that are not even Chicanos to speak for us or to represent us, and then you want to instigate Chicano gang shit with black uh, 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 gang shit and almost start a, a, a little fucking debate or a little race war on your show for numbers. That's what he does. Though. That's what I understand that. So yeah. to finish answering your question, I was asked earlier this year if I would be interested in being on Vlad. And I said, no, there it is there. So you want to call that a beep? Go ahead. But it's not a beep for me. I just said, no, you just declined the offer. That's it. Because I would have went on there and it wouldn't have been nice because I, I would have called them on it. You know, I, I would just say, you know what? Why is it so hard? You know, for an example, let's take the song by YG. What, what was the song called? Local? Yeah. Okay. He, he uses our culture to boost up sales and his numbers. But he couldn't get a Chicano rapper to rap on that song? Yeah. But yet he used Chicanos all in his video. He used our culture, but he grabbed a reggaeton dude to rap on there. Yeah. That's not doing us justice, bro. Yeah. So that type of stuff. That I'm, now, if I'm wrong for standing up for our people... Then go for it. Being, you know, blast me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt, bro. I mean, you and everybody else uh, thought the same fucking thing, dog. You know, what I mean, the same sentiments yeah. in regards to that right there. Um, what else we got right here? Um, uh, so, I mean, what what is it? I mean, what does it take for uh, Tony A to do an interview? Because I had some messages saying that you, hey, ask Tony why he declined uh, this interview, this and that. I mean, what when, when it comes for you to do an interview and shit? I mean, are you very particular uh, on you know? What I mean, what platforms or who you fuck with? Let me answer it this way. Um, before. Again, I have to exp go back to 2007, 2006. I was DJing for Quick and all those guys. We went on tour all year, 2006. New Year's night, going into 2007, was my last show with him. I got paid. I went home, and I did not see him for 10 years. I disappeared. I took another because I wanted to raise my kids and football, you know, whatever. Yeah. Okay. 2017, I came back, and all I wanted to do was um direct documentary to uh, honor Steve Yano, a guy that was a father figure, a mentor, a brother, et cetera, a manager, a friend, since I've been 11 years old. He had passed away from a freak accident. So here's what I say. So that me knowing that this is a predominantly um, black industry, I don't want him being a Japanese man to be lost in West Coast hip hop history. So I hit up all the greats that know him, Lonzo, clientele, Arabian Prince, Violet Brown, which are all my good friends, okay? None of these people are Chicanos, but I got love for them. They got love for me, okay? Mm -hmm. So I set out to do a documentary. When it was done, I was throwing out there, okay? You may not believe this, but I was throwing it out to anybody want to interview me. Anybody want to interview because I wasn't doing no interviews. Anybody want to interview me. Some people w were biting and saying, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, And I was taking on any interview, any. I remember going to a park and we were standing by a fucking tree on a guy's cell phone and we did it. <laughs> I went to a guy's house, no, yeah. no lie, and he had a banner that was falling off. and <laughs> But I still did it. You know why? Because I wanted to promote what I was doing for this man. Not to shine light on me, but like, look at what this guy did. Yeah, it wasn't about you. That's it. But I set a timeline where I said I'm going to stop because we were going to release it. We started early 2019 and I said I'll stop in September because I'm going to start my own podcast in September so for almost I don't know from February to January to September I did all interviews and then I stopped so I said to myself once I start rolling radio I'm only going to be here for a couple of months and then the hype's going to die down and I'll disappear again that was the that was my plan okay and uh rolling radio started taking off 
So I said to myself, man, I can't be spreading myself too thin and giving everybody the same story. Yeah. So the same question. So let me just stop and just be Rolling Radio exclusive. Gotcha. That's it. No disrespect to no one else. Yeah, this that's This is just it. what I'm doing right here. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I declined a lot of interviews too, and it was just not... Um, it it would because they was cats one since I started this they're like well you come you know come through tell your story whoop de whoop whoop but I I've always felt like uh, to, even to this day I mean I I took I took your offer with Rhodium Radio but I just I mean I haven't really told my story yet you know right and maybe uh, one day we can go to Rhodium Radio and I can really uh, tell my story but until then we're gonna focus on I mean I I rather just focus on other people's stories you know what I mean of course um. I, I'm not trying to just like fucking be all about me. This this podcast thing is to shine light on other individuals, you know, and right. just me just adding my fucking personality, right. my fucking retarded sense of humor, uh, right. or whatnot with it, you know. But um, ah man, dog, you know what I mean? Uh, let's 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 let's. You want to take another one? No, let's let's direct this a little different, real quick, bro. You okay. know what I mean? Uh, what was the, some of the best memories, bro, on tour? Oh wow. Meeting, finally, some of the artists that I looked up to growing up. For an example, EPMD. Um, that's the first thing that came to my mind when they told us we were going to be on an EPMD tour. I was like, wow. And then I see Guru, guys from Gangstar. Okay. Legends. Yeah. I yeah. see Dolls FX. You know, just legends like that. And I'm on the same bill, like, you know, as these guys. We're open enough for them. But let me tell you something. We're talking about 14,000, 17,000 stadium. Like, and and some, of, some of them clubs, some are clubs, but like 500 people, 600, 700. Everywhere we were going and we were always rocking. Some of the best shows that I've ever done was with, during that time, with Quick, Second to None, AMG, and High C. Because one will go out, do one song. Another one will come out, do another song. Another one will come out, Quick will go out. And I was DJing for all of them. <laughs> A Chicano from my neighborhood, bro, getting paid to do what I love. That was it, meeting people. And one thing that I always did, nobody told me this. Can I have your number, bro? Yeah. Can I have your number, bro? And I took everybody's numbers down. When I would get home, I would call them up. Hey, how you doing? Always stayed in their ear. Yeah. Always stayed in their ear. But I will say this. I think one of the biggest things that I've ever, if you will, I guess, I don't know how to even categorize it. I was on MySpace on 2000. Uh, what, 2005, I guess, when MySpace <laughs> yeah. was jumping off? Yeah. Okay. I was on there, and I put myself under Tony A. the Wizard. And my friends or whatever you followers started shooting up because people started recognizing who I was for my mixtapes. I always get recognized more for my mixtapes than I do for um, my High C album, okay? And, um, and these these were mixtapes before the High C album, correct? Of course. I had so many of them. I started doing mixtapes in 1987. So... Um, what happened was this. One guy, a black, bro a black brother, named DJ Thoreau, whom I love from the city of Harlem, hit me up on there. Are you Tony A, the wizard? And I said, oh, well, there's only one wizard. There's only one wizard, bro. That's me. <laughs> and he was like, no, no, like the, the DJ mixtape guy. And I said, um, yeah, that's me. And he said, I thought you were black. <laughs> yeah, right. So I said, no, I, I've been Mexican since day one. And he said, here's my number. Call me. So I started checking out his page, and he had pictures with guys from Wu-Tang, 50 Cent, pictures from all around the world that he took. And I was like, holy shit, okay. Somebody. So I called him, and he goes, yo! He had that East Coast flavor, you know? Yo, check this out. Check this out, God. I, I, I'm from Harlem. Only reason why I'm DJing is because of you. That's what he told me. And I was like, what the fuck? I thought it was a prank, to be honest. I said, are you serious? Dude, I'm from fucking Harlem. He said, because of you and DJ Red Alert. He Red said, Alert. that's what he said. He goes, because of DJ Red Alert, I'm doing what I do. And I was like, okay, well, what are you doing now? And he goes, I'm DJing for uh, uh, Raekwon, Ghostface. I'm going to have all the Meta Man. I'm going to have uh, all the Wu-Tang guys. We're going to be next week at the House of Blues in Hollywood. That's what he told me. He goes, why don't you come down? And I'm thinking, this guy's fucking lying, bro. <laughs> and I said, okay, um, what mixtape was that that you heard? He goes, because he said, I was a fan of my mixtape. He goes, 88, booming bass. And he started rapping the, 
the Easy E verse. Get busy with Easy and Tony A on the 12 techniques. And he started rapping the whole shit. And I was like, okay, he knows this shit. I said, all right. He lands in LAX, calls me. I'm staying at this hotel. Come on through. Show up by myself, you know, and uh, go in there. What's up, man? And here's what he told me. All my life, there's only three people I ever wanted to meet. I met Michael Jordan. I met Oprah Winfrey. And the next one was you. <sighs> Damn. That's what he said, bro. And those were fucking humbling words. So I said, wow, you serious? I'm still in disbelief. And he goes, man, come on. We go upstairs. We go into a room. All the Wu-Tang guys are right there. And he says, it's Tony A right there. He used to fuck with Dre and Cube before anybody used to fuck with them. It's a Mexican cat right there. He goes, remember when I came back from L.A. and I told you guys uh, uh, people in L.A. are doing mixtapes like this? That's the guy right there responsible for it. He, he, he told me, these are his words, not mine. Yeah. He said, you influenced a lot of East Coast cats on how to step up their mixtape game. Okay? I'm going to tell you who confirmed that. And he said it on my 100th episode, High C. He said, DJ Scratch is known as one of the best DJs in the world. He DJ for EPMD. I met him in 19, late 1991. And uh, DJ Scratch is an amazing DJ. He said, I played DJ Scratch on mixtape. And he was so fucking shocked. He was impressed. He wanted to meet you. He goes, little did he know he had already met you. <laughs> okay? So we, me and my boy DJ Thor were like this. Took my trip out to New York. Gave me a whole, you know, tour of Harlem. Bumping Bismarck, the Roxanne Chante, the real rock, all the old school shit. Took me to the Bronx, uh, 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 where hip hop started. Took me to Brooklyn. Took me everywhere. Because I had told him, look, dude, I have yet to been. <laughs> so I bought a ticket, flew out there, stayed with him, woke up in fucking Harlem, bro. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Living my dream. I got to see where hip hop started, you know. So uh, DJ Cool Herc, DJ in his first hip hop party. And uh, so I'm an old fool from the old school, bro. So I know a lot. I don't say that to brag, but I've always remained quiet and humble and waited for my time. I mean, you were the only one, you were one of the only brown skinned uh, brothers, you know what I mean, in those fucking circles. I mean, how is it like, can I get a, can I get a, a, a story about either Dr. Dre, Easy e Ice Cube, bro, from back in the day, bro? Like an exclusive story, bro, you know? One thing about Dr. Dre that I remember was this, that, um, it always shocked me because in my in my eyes, I always saw myself as a nobody. You know, like, what am I doing in the presence of this guy? Keep in mind, NWA stuff hadn't even come out yet. He was just playing it for me at the studio. That's where I recorded half of my first High C album. Is at a studio in the city of Torrance called um, um, Audio Achievements. And I like to give credit to the engineer because they didn't even mention him in the movie. Donovan the, the Dirt Biker Smith. He was a white guy. He was the engineer. That was his sound. Okay. Wow. When I say sound, his engineering sound. Yeah, he put that shit together. Yes. So, uh, and that's where later on Bone Thugs recorded, you know, um, Thuggy's Ruggish Bone, stuff like that. So, classic. Yeah. I mean, right there in the city of Torrance, in a white neighborhood, bro, music changed the world coming from there. And I was a part of that, being there. So, Dre plays uh, Dope Man for me. Boom, boom. Get that shit. Get that shit. You could just imagine what was going through my fucking mind, bro. <laughs> because remember, all of that cutting and scratching, he did on the Rodeo mixtapes first. Yeah. So I recognize what he did here, and he put it in here. Okay? He implemented it over there. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, oh, but now it's a song, not just a mixtape. Yeah. So, and then he tells me like this, what do you think? I didn't know what to say. I was speechless. Yeah, he's asking you for your opinion. Yeah. This and I, fucking genius, this fucking yes. god of fucking yes. <laughs> hip-hop music. And, and he's drinking an eight ball, you know, uh, Old English. Yeah. And he's fucked up, and he's looking at me, and he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, like I don't know what to say. Like, you know, later on, of course, after Cube had already left, I'll come back to that story. He plays me 100 miles and running. <laughs> okay? Damn. Dude, and... I'm listening to it. Now, keep in mind, I'm still looking at him, the world-class wrecking crew, Dr. Dre, not as Dr. Dre N.W.A. And I'm still, like, Cube was just, like, a Cube. Easy was easy. Ren was Ren. Because at that time, before their dope man, you know, they were nobodies, bro. They yeah. were just in the studio, but they were very professional. One thing I will say this. They were very professional. Uh, um, they didn't bring that gang element 
into the studio and talk shit about other people. They were always about working. Dre was always about working. That's one thing that I can say I learned about him. And he taught me a lot of quotes, especially about music. Timing is everything. You don't ever just want to release music just because just to release it. So let's just say me and you do a single. I would say, let's wait on it. Wait on what? Let's just wait. Many times we may not know. It ain't going to do us any good to throw it out there and by next week it's forgotten. I, he would say, I would rather create music that's going to last a lifetime that's going to last a month. So timing is everything. Just hold on to it. Just wait. Okay? Uh, uh, the producer is only as good as the rapper that he's working with. That's why I just never produce just for anybody. The producer is only as good as the rapper that he's working with. So when people say, I got money, I'm cool. I want somebody to be able to keep up with my music. And that's what Dre did. Think about this. Easy e was not a rapper, but he made him sound platinum. Yeah, yeah that voice. Yeah, and Cube wrote for him, okay? Yeah. He made him sound beautiful, bro. We still bump that shit, bro. One of my fa fucking favorite songs, Easily I Approach the Microphone Because I Ain't No Joke. Tell your mama to get off of my dick. Dude, I was right there when he played that shit for me, and I'm like, <laughs> okay? So I, if I wasn't there, I can't talk. You know what I'm saying? If I never had a deal, I can't talk. If I've never toured, I can't talk. If I've never worked with these guys, I can't talk. You know, they might be nice lies, but I... Speak on that shit, my G. Speak on that shit. That shit, bro, I love these fucking stories, dog. I love these fucking stories, bro. Bro, in your Rhodium, the Rhodium Swamp Meet, right? Right. You started off, you said you were 11 years old. Yes. You're working uh, Steve Yale? Yano. Yano. Steve, yeah. Steve Yano, a Japanese man that owned this spot in the Rhodium Swamp Meet, which right. is in uh, the city of... Gardena. The city of Gardena, right? Bro, like, what was the vibe back then, bro? You're a fucking young kid. You know, you're, you're DJing at the time, right? Right. You know, you have your mixtapes there as well? Yes. Okay. Let me give the, the story because I think this is... Very intriguing, okay. 100%. You guys know uh, Turbo from Breaking. Yeah. Okay, Turbo. It's fucking bad, bro. The, the guy who danced the Tour de France at the backslide. And by the way, he is from my neighborhood. Actually grew up several blocks from my house that I live right now. Yeah. Okay. He is from my neighborhood. Went to Women's Junior High together. He's one year older than me and went to Bannon together. I spent the summer with him one day, walking around all of my neighborhood, bumping a song. And I want everybody to look it up. It's called uh, Computer Games. And the group's called Yellow Magic Orchestra. It sounds like some Japanese music. It really does. But it was had that electro funk feel to it, like Planet Rock, over some Japanese instruments. Look at a computer games uh, um, by Yellow Magic Orchestra. And that was one of his favorite songs to pop to. When he went to Japan, that was one of the songs that he always popped to. Okay. But I had the cassette, and we would put it on his boombox, and he would always pop. So he taught me how to pop one summer. I was 11 years old. I had just graduated to sixth grade. And so he taught me some moves. My brother was already a DJ in, in the city of Long Beach. And um, here's what happened. We, I met Steve at the Vermont Swamp Meet. This is before the Rhodium. I have to get that clear because this is a part of his history and my history. He, um, my brother said, I'm going to go buy some records from this. Uh, we used to call people Chinos. If you're Korean, Filipino, Japanese, to us, you're just a Chino. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go buy some records from the Chino. And I was like, let me roll with you. I said, all right. So we walked to his stand. And this is still in the city of Gardena. And um, he starts playing a song called Wicker Rap. And uh, I start popping to it, to the moves that Turbo, back then he was called Boogaloo Shrimp. And I started, you know, popping. And back then this was before the arm wave. I think the only wave we had was the stomach wave. And it was just popping, King Tud, Scarecrow, whatever. And it caught the eyes of Steve Yano. And he call, calls me over and he says, hey, who's this kid right here? My brother goes, well, that's my brother right there. And he says, hey, man, you want a job? <laughs> and, and I said, yeah. And he goes, can you pick up this record crate? And so I picked it up. Put it back down. He goes, I could pay you 20 bucks for two days. At that time, I'm just thinking, um, you know, co uh, video game money. Because I like Star Castle, Asteroids, Space Invaders. I like all that <laughs> shit. You know? Yeah, old school shit. The yeah. fucking Atari shit. Yeah. So I started working with him. Um, and every once in a while, he was like, hey, show me some of your moves. So I would start popping again. He was using me to draw in a crowd, okay? Yeah. Cool, whatever. I worked with him for about maybe two and a half, three years. Business died there. They moved to the rhodium. I was still about 13 years old. I couldn't go to the rhodium yet. I was 13 years old. My mom was selling here. I'm a swampy baby, so I'm like, I can't go, Steve. I said, all right, cool, whatever. 
1985, I hear somebody bumping a mixtape. And it said, Dr. Dre here at the Rhodium. The fuck? Keep in mind, I'm thinking Dr. Dre, world-class record crew. Okay? Um, 1986 comes around. Um, I hear another one. Dr. Dre here at the Rhodium with Steve Yana with Cole tearing shit up. Blah, blah, blah. The tape was called 86 in the Mix. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I hit up my boy. And I tell him, hey, man, give me a ride to the Swamp Meet. He goes, which one? It was the Rhodium. I think Dr. Dre hangs out over there with Steve Yano. He goes, how do you know that? He said, because he said Dr. Dre, he said Steve, and he said the Rhodium. Steve sells there at the Rhodium, but I don't know how he knows Dr. Dre. And I shared all this in my documentary, my documentary that, that I made. And uh, so I went over there. By this time, I'm a DJ. 1987, I'm late teenager, 18 years old. And I see Steve, and he sees me, and he recognizes me right away. It's been almost six, <coughs> almost six years yeah. since I've seen him. And he recognizes me. And I just as I'm looking at you, right behind him, Dr. Dre is standing right there, bro. <laughs> so I'm starstruck. Yeah. And there's two other individuals there that I didn't know who in the fuck they were. And uh, he says, what are you doing now? And I said, I I'm, I'm spinning, you know, I'm DJing. And he said, let me see you. Steve had two turntables, two Technique 1200s, and he had a Newmark mixer. Let me see you. I said, all right. So I grabbed two records, and I started cutting and scratching, you know. He really, really liked it. Somebody taps me on the shoulder, and I turn around, and it's Dr. Dre, and he tells me, man, you're really good. He said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, 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 give you my nephew's uh, um, number. He said, that way you can come over. He said, I want you to do some scratching on one of his songs that he's producing. And I said, oh, shit, for reals? And he said, yeah. So I go to the house. That was 1987, and the movie Straight Outta Compton, when Dre leaves his mom's house to go live with his cousin, that was Sir Jinx. That was the guy who, who he gave me his number for. So in 1987, when I went over there, that was around the time that I, w that I was going over there. Dre was, had just moved in, okay? So he introduced me to his cousin, Jinx, who was only maybe about 17 or 16 years old. And then he said, that's a guy named Eric right there. And I was like, oh, hey, what's up? And I shook his hand. Eric Wright. Eric Wright. I didn't know him. He was easy yet, you know? But one thing that stood out about Eric, that he had it's like, like those Air Force Ones type of shoes, and he had his price tag still on him. <laughs> and I remember I looked at his shoes, and I remember I told Steve Yano, I said, hey, you may want to tell that guy he left his price tag still on his shoes. And Steve goes, no, that's just the way they wear them. And I was like, oh, shit. Still has the price, though. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, that bro. shit is tight, bro. Yeah. Damn, I love these stories, bro. So One last story, okay? You got to be the best grandpa ever, bro. I love being a grandpa, bro. I love being a grandpa. I want to be called a grandpa. I want to be called abuelito. I don't want to be called papa or something. Because people say, you don't look like a grandpa. That's why I want to be called grandpa. Because you still look young as fuck, bro. Thank I you, mean, man. you don't Thank look you, like brother. you fucking, what, 52, bro? 52 years old, and I can't wait till before 53. Because I can still knock out them pull-ups, homeboy. Yeah. You know? Hell yeah. So, huh? so, I go to Jinx's house in South Central. Uh, Q comes over. You know, like, I meet Q for the first time. Not in the studio, but I meet him there first. So when I saw that scene in Straight Outta Compton when Q comes over and Dre's cutting it up, me and Steve could have been in that scene, bro. Not saying that I was a part of NWA, but we were there when that shit was happening. Yeah. So um, Jinx uh, has an SP-1200, uh, which is the drum machine. And uh, here's what he says. He says, uh, I'm producing a song for a guy named uh, Calvin Anderson. And I said, who's that? And he said, oh, he owns VIP Records in Long Beach. Keep in mind, this is 1987. And I said, oh, for real? He goes, yeah, I'm doing this beat. You think you could come up with some scratching? So I came up with some scratching on the fly. And he was like, oh, okay. So the song's called You Better Think. If you guys want to listen to it, it's on YouTube. Uh, the rapper was Dazzy D, produced by Sir Jinx. And it's on Thin Line Records. On uh, Now keep in mind, this is the owner of VIP Records. You know, VIP Records where Snoop danced on top on Snoop yeah, Doggy Dog yeah. video. So here's what happened. We go to Echo Sound. I do the scratching. The record comes out. It does pretty good, okay? But I wanted to share something, sharing that story, that before Snoop, before Nate Dogg, and before Warren G, I was there at VIP Records. I'm a part also of VIP history because that is the first record label that released their first record out of VIP, and I was on it. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God, uh, this has got to be one of my favorite conversations right here, dog. Uh, hey, my G, I love you, dog, and I mean you a fucking legend, dog. I mean we, Thank we you, I mean bro, we we you you the fucking Dr. Dre or the fucking Rasa, dog. You know what I mean? Like, bro, you bro, you gotta, just, 
Put some more meat. Do you still have your fucking your, 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 your turntables? Do you still have your beat yes, machine? I, I still have my turntables. I still have a drum machine, yes. Do you ever turn that on? Turntables, yes. Drum machine, no, because I'm not going to take $25 for beats. That's what people are paying today. I'm, I, I will not do it. I would never lower myself. Put it this way. I would rather... I would rather do beats for free for somebody that's promising than to accept twenty five dollars from just anybody, bro. I get you, bro. I mean, but I, I, I mean, as as so, this is the way I see it, dog. So a lot of us, bro, were uh, how do you say it? we weren't we weren't we we didn't know our the 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 death of the 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 death of the history in regards to, I didn't bro, Tony A. the Wizard, you know what I mean? I mean, I I knew you from uh, the high seas yeah. stuff, dog, but as you put the history out there, as Rhodium Radio grows, bro, yes. in a fucking crazy fashion, bro, you were fucking growing so fast, well, thank bro, you, it's man. fucking badass, thank dog, you. you know what I mean? But as you put your story out there and people understand that you were a part of this history bro your price tag goes up so no how no way is someone going to think they're gonna get 25 dollars from a beat from tony a the wizard now i mean what would it take for tony a the wizard to put a beat together for i mean and i'm sure you've been asked bro yeah. all everybody that you fucking interviewed bro what what, what what episode are you on uh uh, it would be one eleven tomorrow. One eleven, and and there's not there's there. I mean, there's not a lot of exclusives because I know when you do an exclusive, it's just one individual. So one eleven, basically uh, multiply that by two because it's usually two guests on that, yeah. which are all fucking artists, bro. I mean, have you had offers thrown at you like, hey, Tony, give yes. me a beat, bro? Like, what what is the price tag for uh, Tony A the Wizard beat? Is there a price tag? Do you have something in mind? I mean, what, what has, has any say, money has any money been thrown at you in regards to that? No, they've asked, but I'll just tell them the truth. I'll just tell them the truth, man. Um, and this is the homie special. People are going to get offended, but I know my worth. Okay? And I don't ever say it in a bragging fashion because I don't have to do it. But I tell everybody 2500 2500 Yeah, and they'll say, no, that's way too much. I pay 25 30 bucks. I say, okay, cool. You know, then, then they throw me their albums, and I listen to them. G give me your honest opinion. And I'm like, they sound like $25 beats. That's what I tell them. Because what you're going to do is you're going to add you're gonna add cuts and scratches and breaks and all that. I don't know the, 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 the proper, uh, uh, you know what I mean? I'm not. I do a beat tailor-made for you. I'm not going to email you anything. You're going to sit down with me right there, and we're going to make it up together. That's that's what I do. We have to have chemistry. We have to have vibe in order for me to make a beat for you. Do you I'm, do you feel you still have that skill set to do? Oh, that? I know I do. I I know I do, and I put it on film. Those of you that have watched my documentary, here's what I say: music is three dimensional. You hear it, okay? You feel it, and you see it. I see music, so I put those three elements in my documentary, and I've never received not one complaint, not one, not one from my documentary. So when I do this. Chicano rap documentary, I'm going to knock it out of the motherfucking ballpark, bro. Because I'm going to let people know that our people are here to stay and we're going to move forward. Now let's talk about the documentary. This documentary that you're going to put out there. When is it going to be released? Who's going to be on it? What is going to be the, 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 we obviously know what the foundation is going to be. Right. You know, what, what, you know, so, and we also know the direction you're going. The direction is to be like, hey, this is something that you need to fucking respect we are we are a force to be reckoned with you know what i mean we are talented we are brown skinned brothers i mean is it is it i mean when it comes to you and your history and your documentary and something you're going to push forward i mean it's going to be a a, a multi-cultural you know what i mean it's going to be brothers it's going to be a rasa you know what i mean um <sighs> let, let, let me say this because i've said this from, since the beginning of this episode that I like to give credit where credit is due, okay? The very first Chicano rap label ever was from a black man, Murray Brumfield. The first Chicano uh, uh, rap label. Was that Thump Records or something? Familia Records. Familia Records. Yeah. He signed a bunch of Chicanos. I'll just name Essay Rich Rock slash Spanish Fly, okay? Which most people would debate. Most people debate. I'm not going to debate about it. 
that they were before that he they laid down Chicano rap foundation before Frost. Not saying that they rapped before Frost because Frost had his records like Rough Cuts. He had a song called Terminator, and then in 1990 he released La Raza. I don't take nothing away from Frost. Frost opened the door for a lot of people. Who's the first? Is he the first? A lot of people. That's the debate that I'm talking about. A lot of people would debate that it was Frost. Some people say it was Spanish Fly. So, but we're gonna touch on that on the documentary because we have to lay down a foundation. Yeah, we. I mean, people, uh, raza, Chicano rap, homies, um, whatever you want to label it, right? Whatever, whatever you want to label yeah. uh, uh, the genre, you know, um, there needs to be a history lesson, and you are the one to lay down that fucking history lesson, bro. You, the, you. you I mean, you're the chosen one, bro. I mean, out of everybody out there that was doing it, bro. You were in the circle, even though you weren't accepted in the circle, even though it fucked you up, bro. Like, fuck, why, you know what I mean? Like, why can't I be, you know what I mean? Like, even though you were there, you weren't right there, so to speak, right? Right, right. You know what I mean? You were there, right. but you weren't right there. You weren't, you didn't get your uh, you, your respect that, that you wanted. I mean, are you, are you coming? I mean, are you still, like, you want your respect? Are you coming for it? I mean, you know what? If here, here's how I'm gonna come for it by releasing this documentary and continue, continuing to shine light on our people. I would feel that I've accomplished something when I see a Chicano Drake, a Chicano Little Wayne, a Chicano Dr. Dre, a Chicano, you know, Kanye West. That's when I feel that we, as a people, have somewhat made it in the rap game. Okay. Because obviously there's people that have made it in like, you know, in other uh, genres of music or how would you say, uh, in acting and, uh, you know, in, uh, television or whatever. We're out there, but I'm talking about this genre of music, you know, that I want to see somebody really, really make it. I mean, we we're, support we're, everybody. We're out there, but we're not in there. Exactly. You know, who, who's the best, who's the best Chicano rapper that you fucked with, bro, that you were like, you know what? This this the one right here. This the dude, you know. I don't know if it's a dude. I don't know if it's a dude. Um, there's a couple of guys out there that I'll mention in a minute that I really, really, really like. But I will say that there's liability issues. Meaning, say for an example that I really like you, Lucky, and I want to work with you. Yeah. But Lucky, you're still banging, homie. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a bad investment. That's what I'm saying. Investments is everything, bro. You know what I mean? Like I've had homies, I've had homies uh, get out from the pen that are from my neighborhood, bro. And uh, and uh, they're they're fucking such uh, very talented individuals, bro. And and so uh, my my little journey that I took through the little underground hip hop, you know, I got some plugs, bro. You know what I mean? Like I can I can help you out, but I've always told the homie, like, bro, like I'll help you out, but you need to kind of like, uh, is it is this gonna be a good investment? Are you gonna be in jail the fucking next week uh, and, later, you know? And and I had a guy named Pablito, and I always like to give him credit because he was one of the guys that invested. And he will be in the documentary in a record label called Hit or Lick Records, invested. I won't give the number, but I will say it was close to a million dollars. And he signed pretty much every Chicano rapper out there in the late 90s. This is a story that has never been told. But it was told on Rhodium Radio exclusive. Look up Pablito, okay, on Rhodium Radio. He said this, Hollywood wants nothing to do with rap and gang violence. Nothing. They're scared of it, bro. That's where we... The liability. As a, yes, as the people shoot our, ourselves in the foot. Because we want to be hard, you know, we want to be, you know... Too real. Too real, bro. And too, too real for the motherfucking uh, for for a, a, a platform that is uh, a, a lot of uh, fake personas and yeah. whoop de whoop whoop and this and that and bop 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 you know what I mean but I, I get it bro because when it comes to L A the fucking culture is just it, it's so right. deep and when you find these cats that are really from the fucking streets and you're like oh bro you got the look yeah oh you you got the bars you know what I mean we can really fuck with you you know what I mean yeah. but then they see all the luggage behind I that know. shit and they're just like ah. I mean in, in sports if you're a quarterback you're a dope quarterback you can't get along with your team in the locker room most teams are gonna pass up on you. It's the same thing, okay? So now, um, 
there's a female out there that I really, really, really like. She's very, very young. I think she's still moldable. When I say moldable, you can still mold her and shape yeah. her. Uh, I think she has a really, really good chance. There's a couple of females out there that I really, really like. If I were to ever to work with anyone, I think I would rather choose working with females because they listen. Today, guys... You're fucking knuckleheads. Yeah, dude, I'm from the fucking hood, homie. You even tell me, this is my life. This is my hood. This is the shit that I've been through. Yeah. Okay, bye. That's what you're going to go deal with. Hey, I got a water for you right there, bro, just in case you want it. Okay, it's we're right good, on the bro. Side, bro. Just to let you know, dog. All good. Gracias, bro. Yeah. But, um, um, but, but that's what it is, man. I, I can invest... I cannot invest my time in somebody that might be locked up, you know, five weeks from now because he killed somebody or he has a warrant or whatever. Uh, but that even goes even, I've, I've known managers that were black that had black artists that these Crips couldn't stop gangbanging. They released a whole album and it never went anywhere. Great album. It never went anywhere because when that album was released, they, both of them were locked up and they lost money. So that's when I say Hollywood does not want anything to do with rap and gang violence. And that is part, not fully, but part of the reason why us as a people have never climbed that ladder. So some women, they don't have to deal with that mess. They just want to perform, but they need leaders to lead and guide them into those open doors. Uh, for an example, I still have connections to record labels. Trying to get a record deal today is like, you know, getting struck by lightning twice, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I could point you in the right direction. If they're interested, they'll pick you up. Yeah. You know, but... Um, uh, I mean, is it really all about that nowadays? Because everybody, right. everything is so independent yes. nowadays. I mean, it's so a accessible to, right. to you know what I mean? Like, the, the way social media is is uh, designed and all this shit. Like, fuck a record label. I think the record labels are fucking probably suffering right, right now, right? Right. Because of independent artists. I mean, what's that What's that one uh, uh, distribution company, bro, out of uh, uh, the Bay Area, bro, that... Uh, uh, that fucking uh, takes on a lot of fucking artists. Um, I don't remember. At I'm trying moment. to think right now, bro. But um, anyways, it's just independent artist is is like people are about their own business nowadays. Yes. I mean, a record label. I don't know. I think that's just uh, slowly uh, going going down the fucking drain. But who is who is the who's who? What's a Chicano rap artist that you really fuck with, dog? That I I listen to and that I really really like. Yeah, that you like, dog. And, and this is not an order. Okay. Yeah. Now, two people come to mind. I really like my boy Cujo the Savage. Yeah. I really, really like him. Um, I met him and we connected. He calls me pop sometimes. He calls me uncle. You know, and I like guys like that. You know, guys that if they allow me, I can mentor them, point them in the right direction. All I ask is make wise decisions. You know, because a lot of times, a lot of these guys, and I'm not saying just him, but are still active on the streets. Yeah. So. Another guy that I like is uh, Misfit Soto. Who he's a fool's heart. He's been on this podcast. Yeah. Dog. That was another homie that I was about to bring up, dog, besides Bodachi, dog. I think Misfit, dog, is... Yeah. And what's crazy about Misfit is Misfit has been in the game for a fucking long time. I yeah. mean, he's... I think he's, like, in his mid-fucking-30s, dog. He was on this fucking podcast, dog. And I think he is in a fucking exceptional... Not only fucking lyricist, dog, but fucking producer. This dude is the full fucking package. I mean, I feel like that dude can be a real our, our Kanye West, dog. Uh, I met him. Here's how I met Misfit, and I'll make this short. He hits me up on Instagram, and he tells me, hey, man, I look up to you. He said, would you mind doing a cameo appearance on one of my videos? He had a song called Revenge, so you guys can look it up. And uh, I said like this, because I didn't want to just co-sign it. I said... Well, send me the song. Let me listen to it. Yeah. And he said, okay, cool, you know. So he sent it to me. I liked it. I said, I told my son, well, what do you think? Because my son is a lyricist. He likes lyrics. Yeah. I'm more of a beat guy. He goes, I think you should do it. I think it's pretty good. So I said, all right, cool, whatever. So I did it. I began a relationship with him. I liked him so much. He had an album called uh, Embrace the Breakdown. To me, the best independent artist album of 2019. Hands down for me. I love that record, so I, I asked him. Again, to some people, he was a nobody. He was episode number two on Rodeo Radio. I had Mellow Man Misfit, okay? We built a relationship. Um, I would have hoped that Misfit would have gone higher now than last year. What happened, I don't know. His music still speaks for itself. His lyrics still speak for itself. I just wanted to see him climb the ladder more, and I just feel that he hasn't gotten there yet. 
maybe maybe he hit the ceiling and and when it comes to homies rapping yeah probably because there's a ceiling right yeah unfortunately there's there's a ceiling that we can only go so fucking far as artists i mean who yes. is who is who is, what's a uh rasa rapper that is as i mean king little g has he gone the furthest of of anyone probably independently independently probably right? independently but here's my thing i know we've somewhat made it when we perform at you know Times square on new year's night you know when we perform you know uh um on the view you know when we made it on oprah all of these other rappers have done all that bro yeah all of them and we're still on the on the outside buying their records buying their tickets buying their merch hoping we could you know but that's why we need more voices like this more podcasts like this to shine light on our people so that we can bust the door open you know um uh, if i was to be a promoter of course i'd get black artists uh, but at the same time i in the midst of them, she's gonna rap her black artist. She's gonna rap her black artist. We all come up together. We all come up together. I'll tell you why. Because most Chicanos won't. So if a Miss Pesoto, a Cujo, or a Little One, or Shadow, it'll probably be maybe, and I'm just guessing, uh, um, halfway full. But if we get a game to headline and get all these other Chicanos, now we're throwing them out in the front. It's gonna be to the point where we no longer need game. We have a headline or Little Rob or Shadow or Little One. And we start throwing our own shit, but it takes steps. You know, that's that would be my strategy. I mean, the, the evolution of uh, Chicano hip hop is uh, still growing, and, they're, and uh, obviously there's still fucking. Uh, it's 30 uh, years. There's, there's still segregation, there's still discrimination. Yes. Um, maybe they just want the fucking homies to make them tacos instead, dog. I don't know, bro. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, I mean,. It, let me ask you this. Would, yeah. you, would you be happy, and, I, and I'm asking everybody out there listening to this, would you be happy with your CDs only selling at car shows and swap meets? Fuck no, bro. Fuck no, dog. That no. shit, that, 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 that's, that's, that's fucking like, there's levels to this game, you know what I mean? And when we speak on levels, you know these levels, bro, because you know the initial level is the swap meet, is the fucking lowrider. Those are the like level one and two. That's it, right? That's like level one and two. You know what I mean? And so if you're if if your ceiling is level one and two, bro, fuck dog, join fucking the union, IBEW local eleven. You can be a badass electrician, dog, in five years. <laughs> I'm just saying. But this is a question I wanted to ask you, bro. Um, and and so and check it out, bro. Yeah, let me just ask you this question. Um. I just fucking lost my train of thought right now. It's okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say something. No, this, this is what I want to ask okay. you. What did you do between time to make money, dog? When you took these time, this time off, bro. I'm sorry, dog. I mean, I, I don't mean to like stop you from what you were going to ask, but I, 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 okay. I, I found my train of thought. What did you do in between time, bro? I went out and got a job. What did you do? Okay. I called up a good friend of mine named Violet. And I shared this on my hundredth episode. That's that white, that white broad, right? Yes. Why is she the godmother of hip hop? That, and that I was looking at that, and I looked her up because I, I, I go down this rabbit hole, of Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. You know what I mean? And and, and 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 I see you. You're the only person on YouTube, bro, that has put this white female on a platform saying she's the godmother of fucking hip hop. Right. Why is that, and why hasn't anyone else acknowledged her? Well, I think they have. And I'm going to just, okay, for an example, I met her in 1987 through Steve. Everybody that I met was through this Japanese man, okay? This lady is recognized and is known worldwide by people like Dr. Dre, people like Cube, people like Easy, people like Snoop, people like Eminem, people like Master P, people like Puffy, just to name a few. All of them at one point or another have named her name or said it on songs. And, and, I, and I'm gonna tell you why. Real quick, I'll tell you afterwards, but I met Master P one time and he was a badass motherfucker, dog, cool as fuck, but go ahead. So, Violet Brown worked at the warehouse record store. Do you remember the record store called The Warehouse? Yeah, bro. Okay. okay. Where, you get the, where you get the VHSs and all that shit, bro? The, the reason why I say that is because this younger generation don't know record stores. No. So I have to say that back then we had Music Plus, Sam Goodies, 
Tama Records Warehouse, and there was a couple of other ones. Yeah. Um, so here's what happened. She was the head buyer for hip hop. She was she could make you say you're say you come in tomorrow and uh, you come in and you meet with me and she likes you. And it's just not this, just just a long story short. Yeah. But it's a fucking humongous fucking buzz out on you in LA. Yeah. That you're the next one. Okay? She here's what she'll tell you. By tomorrow you'll be gold. Okay? By tomorrow you will be gold. Meaning you would have sold five hundred thousand. She had the power to do that. Damn. She would ship from the warehouse five hundred thousand copies. Okay, she was in control of that. Yes, nationwide. So by by the end of the week on Billboard, you know, Lucky has shipped and certified gold. She had the power. She already knew it. She can. She can. Yeah. Yes. She can get your fucking record and put it out there. Let me take a leak real quick, dog. Go for it. Go for it. So uh, that's why many people. And then once again, to make a long story short. Uh, that's why she is recognized as the godmother of hip hop. And this is kind of odd to be left alone, but I respect my boy Lucky. So I will try to answer whatever you guys throw at me. So uh, let me see. Uh, I found my little profile record. Blah, blah, blah. Anybody have any questions out there? Uh, RIP Danger, the brown side, obviously. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Much love, homie. What up, Tony? Uh, let me see. Tony, hey, did you get a nine to, what did you get a nine to five at? Well, let me explain that. He asked me, what did you work at? I actually worked for her at the warehouse. She uh, gave me a job when I, all I knew was music. Um, my first job was selling records. After that was uh, opening up a video store. And I want to say 19, I don't know, 86, 87, somewhere around there, 86. I opened up my first video store and I ran it, had my first business. That's why I love horror movies so much. Then um, after that, um, I started doing the music, but after I took the break from the music because of the bullshit that was going on, I called up my friend Violet Brown. She gave me my, my other job, which was working for her at the warehouse, and I was there for several years. I left there, and then I started working with Chicano Rappers, what I mentioned earlier. Ross, Slow Pain, Little Rob, Nino Brown, oh, my boy G from my neighborhood, Lawless. I got to give much love to my boy G, my boy George from the Lawless Click. Um, they are the ones that released that song, um, Bed Drama, The Enemy, and I can go on and on and on. A lot of people also don't know, by tomorrow, I'm going to be interviewing Daza on Rodeo and Radio. Daza, the car show, um, I guess, icon queen, uh, queen of the lowrider car shows, um, she used to be on a lot of those songs. A lot of people don't know. She did ad lib. She did singing. Daza was actually an artist. A lot of people don't know that they just associate her with the lowrider stuff, the lowrider car shows. But Daza was actually an artist. So tomorrow she would actually be on Rhodium Radio, and somebody's calling me, and I gotta forward their stuff. But yeah. Hey, so where is she at now, dog? She was once upon a time ago in this position of power. What is she doing now? One thing about Violet is this. Violet should have been a millionaire years ago. Right. M millionaire. Just like my boy Calvin Anderson from uh, VIP Records. But you know what they do? They help people for free. I got you. She was just one of those. She was just one of those. Yeah, for uh, sure. Let me share something with you really quick. And during that time when I was working with her, and this was, this was a humbling experience because I came from making a lot of money driving Mercedes Benz, having my own apartment by the beach, to leaving that because I didn't want to put up with shit. So then I went and got a job with her. I was making five seventy five. dollars okay? I was, made, I was working 60 hours in four days. I had three days off, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Every day I work for about three years, 15 hours a day, 15 hours a day, 15 hours a day, 15 hours a day. After tax, this is what my check looked like. Honest to God, $502 check, $502 every week. Did that shit hurt or what? Oh, no, it did hurt. It was a humbling experience. It was I mean, a, from being Tony A. the Wizard, uh, you know what I mean, uh, in these circles of fucking, uh, I mean, just fucking legends, bro. I mean, do you do you keep in contact with any of these individuals? Have you reached out to Dre? Have you reached out to Cube? All, all of those guys I reached out. I know that if I would have saw them and I talked to them, everything would be good. But when they have managers that don't relate messages, I've had people like clientele, Lonzo, uh, uh, Arabian Prince, DJ Speed, guys that are close to 
or that no Q real real good, will say if you contact her, she won't give them shit. For a whole year when we filmed the documentary, I was trying to get Cube, I was trying to get Dre, and those messages never got back to them. So, so we went ahead and just we had to finish it. I mean, sooner or, sooner or later, bro. You know, what I mean, they're gonna. I mean, with the rhodium radio, right? With the, the the movement that you're pushing, it's gonna grow, bro. By the by, the summer of next year, your right. numbers are gonna fucking double, if not fucking triple, bro. Um, sooner or later, I I, I I I I'll predict it right now. You know, what I mean, they will be on rhodium radio, dog. I believe so as well. Yeah, they'll be on rhodium radio, and and that will create uh uh that will create more opportunity for you yeah. and maybe that will that will inspire you bro to get back in those fucking circles that once upon a time ago you were in as kids bro before they even fucking blew before motherfuckers even thought of these fucking dudes dog and and and, and you'll get your fucking uh uh, instead of twenty five hundred dollars for a motherfucking beat, <laughs> homie, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, right. bro, like I want to hear, I want to hear you put music back together, bro. You know what I mean? I hear this shit you've done, and I'm just like, bro, this dude is a fucking, he is the wizard, and the wizard needs a fucking, uh, 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 you, you need, you need, bro, you, you need to, you need to fucking continue. That legacy, like the, the 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 sweetest end of the book, bro. Of uh, if it's the end of your book, bro, would for you to be back in the studio with these greats again, bro, and producing, DJing, mixing again, bro. Yeah. Like, bro, like you you have obviously have an ear for it. I mean, do you have anything right now, bro, that we can hear no. that you've done in the recent years? No, no. I, and I, honestly, I'll tell you what, what, why I would never play music. Do you want another like one of these? No, we're good. Okay. We're good. Um, I'll tell you why I will never release. And let me encourage some of you producers to do what I did. You don't have to, but here's what I did. There are many people that are so quick to show their music off to a, a room full of people. You don't realize you're giving people million dollar ideas. Yeah. You could play a fucking banging ass fucking beat. Some violin ass fool who has no creativity but knows how to use equipment would run home, recreate that beat, have the hookup, sell it to a cube, sell it to a game, sell it to whatever. And I'm going to tell you what, how that happened. My boy Seven from the city of Torrance, dope rapper, dope producer, dope engineer. Hellified Records. Hellified Records. Yes, sir. Submitted music to YG on his first album. Okay? YG gave them back his CD. We're not interested. YG songs come out. They sound exactly like fucking Seven's music. You know what they did? <sighs> they just took his shit. Fucking Jack move. That's it. No credit, no nothing. And I, I called him up and I go, hey, did you produce that for YG? Nah. He, he just bit my shit. Everybody's calling me and telling me. That. Exactly. That's your whole fucking style, bro. They took our shit and ran with it. Y te mandaron a la verga. That's what I told him. I, I'm not going to do that. So if somebody's willing to pay me, sit down with me, we'll create it. And I'll tell you, you like that? You like that snare? Cap, cap, cap. You like that? You like that hat? You like that kick? Cool. We start laying the foundation. I start building a beat tailor made for you. That's why it's worth it. So, so, so if if you were to get back into a studio, bro, I mean, being the fact that you're old school, right, and you're familiar with old school ways of making a beat, yes, is 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 that is that still effective to this? time that we're in i mean a lot of people use fruity loops and they yeah, use I know. they use different shit and they I buy mean, samples people yeah, buy samples i mean would you i mean would you be able to keep up with the times so to speak i don't know if i'm uh, no but this and i'm gonna tell you why i wouldn't be able to keep up with the times i'll tell you why because in the early west coast days west coast had their sound let's just say it was the g-funk shit the G-Funk slash gangster shit. Yeah. West Coast, I mean, East Coast had the boom bap shit. The, the Wu-Tang, the, pub, the public enemies, the uh, criminal minded, uh, you know, BDP, KRS-One, Rakim's, the Nazis. The South had their, their own sound. Today, across the board, everybody sounds the same. Everybody's autotone, everybody's mumble rapping. Okay. At least that's what I get. I would, I'm not going to keep up with that. I'm going to come out with something different. The only way you're ever going to work is if you're different. That's it. You have to be different. Look, I always tell people this. I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I just want to be different. What makes you stand out from this guy? 
One of the questions that major record labels would always ask an artist and they didn't know how to answer. What makes you different from all these other boxes of demos that I have? And most artists did not know how to answer and that's why they never got a record deal. We're talking about late 80s, early 90s. What makes you different? Because they weren't different. Many guys were trying to be in NWA. Many guys were trying to be Dr. Dre. Many guys were trying to do Warren G type style music. Be yourself. They blew up because they were different. Be yourself. Another reason why Chicano rap has never taken off. There's just one another reason. Many of them sound the same. I just want to sample more bounds. I want to use talk box. I want to sample Funkadelic. I want to sample Parliament. I, they all sound the same. None of them stand out. Misfit stands out because he's different. Right or wrong? <laughs> Cycle Realm stood out because why? They, they were did. different. They okay? We can go down the line. Cypress Hill blew up because they were different. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's all there. How was it working with B-Real in the studio? B-Real was a straight fucking professional. I did a song with him called Latin Connects that never came out with him and Sendaga and Mellow Man Ace in 1997. And the city of Alhambra at Steviano Studio, which we called Scandal Studios. And he went in there and uh, played him the beat. He, he wrote, he wrote, he wrote, he wrote, maybe 30 minutes. And then he goes, okay, I'm ready. Then he goes into the studio, uh, into the vocal room, which is in a different room. And he goes, give me a minute. And all you hear is the lighter. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. That's what he did. And I press play and record. That's the perfect, perfect segue for this right here. So, so yeah, I have history with a lot of these guys. Look, at people that are listening to me know that I don't go around bragging about it, bro. I don't ask for credit because I know what I did. I know what I did. I could have took everything to the grave. Everything. But my son. You told it, the stories to your son. Yeah. And he, and he, I, I, I heard that on the interview, bro. You, you were going to take it to the grave with you. Yeah. And he said, you're too busy trying to make a name for Steve, but what about your name? And that's what he said. And I just said, here's what, I don't care. Nobody cares. You know, that's what I got from the very beginning of music. Nobody cares, you know, what I think. You know, bro, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm this dude, dog. And I'm this dude because I'm this dude. I root for the underdog. I'm a, you know, I watch a movie, I root for the underdog. Right now, bro, I, I, I've listened to the interviews about you, bro. I, I'm sitting here with, fuck, with Tony Ada Wizard. Who would have who ever fucking thought, dog? Fucking Lucky from Highland Park, dog. Sitting here with the big dog right here that was around all these fucking legends, bro, you know? Um, and honestly, bro, like, homie, I am rooting for you, dog, to come back, homie. And hit us with them classics, dog. I mean, bro, this is your fucking time, bro. Thank I mean, I, I, this could be your prime at 52 years old. Maybe God used Moses at the age of 80. This could be your <laughs> prime right here, bro. You know, look at, look at, uh, 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 what's homie's name? Uh, the, the fuck, oh my God, they produced all D-Ru, uh, Guru shit. What's his name? The Did you premiere? Premier, look at Premier, bro. Premier is still killing it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Premier is probably older than you, dog. Where, where is the Chicano Premier? Probably sitting right in front of me, dog. And you just don't want to pull out the motherfucking turntables and hit that motherfucking boom bap motherfucking shit, dog. You know what I mean? I know boom bap real fucking good, bro. Let me let me say this, okay? If I ever, even in my old age. If I ever get through this door again, and I'm talking to a big company, I guarantee my people, okay? And I'm not asking for no money. I'm not asking, all I'm asking is for support. Let me, let me even back up. All I'm asking is for you to believe in me that I'm gonna open the door for everyone, bro. Okay, because when I went and shot my documentary to Netflix, to Showtime, to the HBOs, to the Hulus of the world. And that's cool that you brought that up because someone asked that fucking like, Fucking half an hour ago, dog. If you were gonna shop this to Netflix, okay. I, I, I okay. That you gotta wrap one. I've already got people that want to invest in it, but I said hold on, because I already have the public that went and uh, I set up a GoFundMe. But let me touch on that GoFundMe after my point. Yeah. Okay. 
for this Rodeo Mixtape documentary, I went to all of these offices, the Showtime, the Hulus, the Netflix. I met white people, Indian people from India, and that was all I met. I didn't meet no blacks, and I didn't meet with no Chicanos. None. Business. Now, let me say this. So, But I also encourage everyone to educate yourself. Why? Because we need our people in those buildings. So when we get there, guess what? They understand our culture. They, they understand us. They understand the lingo. I, I met people from Canada. I met people from Philadelphia. I met people from India. I met people from uh, 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 Australia. None of them knew the Chicano or the California culture. None of them. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck are these people doing here? And yet we are predominantly all of LA and none of us are in there? We're getting recognized for other things uh, uh, besides the fucking music. You know what I mean? They're, they're using this for other areas. Um, they're, they're, obviously, there's a ceiling when it comes to us and the fucking of course. Music, the music and shit, you know? But education will get you in these doors. So guess what happens when Lucky or me walks in and I see one of our own? I got this one. <laughs> That's what we need. Off the rip. Yes. Just like they do each other. Yes. Just like they do each other. Oh, 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 oh that's a homie motherfucking T-Mac. Yes. T-Mac. That sounds bad, huh? But anyways, yeah, let him in. I know that dude. I know that his auntie, his uncle, whoop, 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 bop, that's bop, bop, bop. I mean, let him in. And just by the famili familiarity of the fucking face or the, the, the name yeah. or whatnot, automatically let in. And so besides, so what we can do from crying about this shit is we can put ourselves in positions of fucking yes. power. So so now, um, to the Chicano Rap documentary, I've had three people that belong to three major companies that have already reached out to me and said, we want to buy it. And I haven't even finished filming it. We're still filming the beginning stages. And they said, we want to buy it. And I was like, oh, hold on. Now, I had one, only one ugly uh, a message on Facebook. Uh, this dude left me a whole paragraph because he was all in his feelings. Here's what he said. <laughs> he said, you know what? He said, I lost all respect for you when you started the GoFundMe page. That's what he said. Keep in mind, I never considered myself a director until I did the, the mixtape documentary for Steve. But I asked the public on Rodeo Radio, if you guys are interested and if you guys enjoy the documentary, I'm going to start a GoFundMe and it's up to you if you guys want to fund me. The The... the the, the goal is $15,000. And I'm going to tell you what we use that for. We're pretty we pretty much used all of it on all brand new equipment that we own just so we can film. We're filming it for free. Pretty much. Okay? Nobody gets rich off of a documentary. So you put a GoFundMe up and yes. you reach your goal with the $15,000. In weeks. In weeks. We, we, we reached 18000 That's fucking amazing. Okay? Bro. And one individual, now somebody may say, well, you should have given no shot. But I want to address it because he said, I lost all respect for you because you started to go fund me. And here's what I replied. If people didn't believe in me, then they, they shouldn't have gave. Yeah, they would have not donated, bro. So if they didn't support the movement, you know what I mean? They're not going to put their fucking hardworking dollar or your, or your drug dealing dollar on that bitch. You know what I mean? Straight right. up. You know so what I mean? now it is my job to make sure that the people that supported me get what they paid for. So that's why I'm going all out. Nobody becomes a millionaire from a documentary, bro. <laughs> Nobody uh, does. Okay. Can I ask you a question, bro? Yes, sir. <laughs> Whatever you want. And then I'm going to give you something. <coughs> then I'm going to give you something because I need to get on out of here. Yeah, 100%. <coughs> <coughs> a proud of the cost. Hey, um, is there any way, bro? So, is there any way, bro, that I can uh, just be standing beside you in one of those fucking scenes on the documentary? Yeah, that. Yeah, there's no problem. Yeah, I mean, I just want to like be like. Oh. Well, <laughs> did you see my face right there? <laughs> can I? Hey, can I? Can I get on that somehow, some way, bro? Lucky, let me tell you something. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you on air, but I will tell you off air. I already had plans to use you on there, bro. So <laughs> you don't even know. You don't even know. And look, you guys can mark my words at this time. What time is it? Almost eight o'clock. And that I said that you can call me on it. I had. I had already planned, so we'll leave ah, it at that. gee, I love you, dog. Thank you. Thank you so much, oh, dog. No. Always remember this. When you think of something and you plan it like the Chicano rap, 
I'm already thinking three steps ahead already. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's why I call myself Tony Vision on YouTube because I have a vision. I believe God blessed me with that. I'm always going to be three steps ahead of everyone. So when people think they have me figured out, I'm already ahead of you. I, I'm already thinking about the future, what I'm going to do. Damn, bro. So, and I encourage others to think the same. Set goals and meet them. So. What do you got for me? I, I'm not <laughs> going to tell you, bro. No, what do you got for me? You, got, oh, you brought oh, me shit. something. Yes. One of my favorite tequilas. Uh, I like drinking, you know, Blanco tequila. Yeah, I like, I like the block. One. Yeah, I like that too, dog. I mean, I've never had this one before, but it's got a cork on it. So anything with the cork is the shit. I like it, bro. Yeah. I like that's the shit that I drink on um on Rodian Radio. I take shots and whatever. But, and then I'm gonna give you my high C album that I produced. Okay, the first wait, one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I know you gotta go. Hold up. Okay. Hold up. Can I get a moment of your time? All good. So this is the... Hey, I said hold up, right? Did you motherfuckers hear me? Bro, sign that motherfucker for me right now, dog. Okay. You know I mean, I need to get that shit on motherfucking. Okay. Uh, I need to get that shit on there, dog. I got that shit signed. I'm going to put that shit right up there next to Esteban Oreo's motherfucking picture book, dog. You know what I mean? This is Los Angeles. Yes, sir. Damn, that shit's tight, tight, super tight, dog. You know what I mean? Right, Don't get mad, mad if you, you see me when I'm doing hard times. This shit's on the eBay, dog. <laughs> hey, lovey love. Thank you, baby. Okay. I love you. Look at this shit right here, guys. Uh, na, na, is, na, na. This is a set of my mixtapes. Okay. Hell yeah, dog. Okay, this they're is... all sealed. And there's a, four of them I did, four of them Dre did, and I got a lot more coming. Bro, like so, th these these are these are not duplicates of of one, right? These are all individual mixtapes. All tapes? individual ones that came out in the eighties. Damn, 80s. bro, that's eighties hip hop. <sighs> Look at that collection right there, yeah. my G. Oh my God, dog, this is fucking badass, dog. Yeah, bro. So we I did, love this shit, dog. You know we what I mean? put it uh, to make it more of a memorabilia type of deal. This is this is all just like individual tracks, like nothing uh, yes. of these albums are are, are 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 the same. None of them, they're oh all different. Oh my bro. god! Once dog. again, you have Dre rapping on them, Q rapping on them, Easy, JJ Fast. This is Tone from them. the eighties, shit, bro. All eighties, bro. All I mean, 80s. do people? Is there any way people can get this besides from you? And I constantly promote it on DocuMixery.com. I'm the only one that sells them, bro. I had all my mixtapes remastered. It's just that my team is so small. We can't be everywhere at one time. And people always ask, what can you do in an interview? I have so much going on, man. I really, really do. And I still have to make time for my life. You know, working out and going eating my sushi at least once a week. Hey, tell me about sushi, bro. You mentioned sushi a couple of times, dog. I mean, what, 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 so check it out. I'm about the prison spreads, dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, is there any way, like, what is good about sushi, dog? In, in your health. Two-part question. Okay, uh... If you guys love mariscos, if you guys love ceviche, if yeah. you guys love aguachiles, Whew. it's just kind of like the Japanese version of that. Now, I'm going to tell you how I first got introduced to sushi. My whole life literally evolves around my, my, my good friend, Steve Yano, Okay, One day, I went to go live in his house. He had a house in the city of Alhambra. And my mom had kicked me out of the house because of personal reasons. And I just said, I'll pack my stuff and I'll leave. I went out there. I recorded the other half of the High C album. Okay. I'm sitting there and he comes in with a bunch of sushi. And I go, what the fuck is that? And he said, it's sushi. He has sashimi, which is like straight raw fish, straight raw fish, maybe marinated in some juices or something. And I said, well, what about that rice with the avocado, the shrimp? And what is that? He goes, oh, that's crab and seaweed. I'm like, nah, dude. I said, dude, <laughs> I need like some hamburgers or something, man. So then he goes, no, that's all I got for you. And I was like, dude, I don't eat that shit. So what I did, he leaves and I'm living by myself. So I take out the rice, I eat it. I take out the little cucumber I eat. I take out the little shrimp. I leave the seaweed and everything. So he brings nothing but Japanese beer, Sapporo or Asahi. And I'm like, fuck, I'm used to Corona, Tecate or whatever. Pop open that motherfucker and I start downing it. I start getting fucking buzz. I saw what he did with... Uh, the soy sauce and the wasabi, which looks like a little piece of avocado, but it's actually hot sauce. Yeah. So I mixed it with the soy, grabbed a little piece of one like this, and I went like this, no lie. 
And that's how I ate it because I, I was just hungry. I, I got so fucking used to it after a while. I was like, and I've been a fan of sushi ever since 22 years old. That's dope, dog. So, oh, I love I love that shit. What's your favorite uh, Mexican? Uh, what's your What's your favorite Mexican dish? I got a couple questions, just like fucking retarded questions, like third grade questions. But that's this, easy. Yeah. What's 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 your favorite Mexican dish? Un plato de chile verde. I don't care, you know, pork, of course. And I rarely ever eat pork, but when I do, plato chile verde, whether it's a wet, your green chili wet burrito or just chile verde con arroz y frijoles. Uh, that's I love. I love a pico de gallo. I put it on my beans or I put it on my rice. Or whatever, and tortillas de harina, or tortillas de maíz, and you know, make tacos out of it. But that's my fucking favorite dish, Mexican dish of all time. I don't know if I have a second. I eat all Mexican food, but if you want to eat healthy, you do got to cut out Mexican food. Hundred percent. And so, and back to what I asked you originally, bro. What's your health regimen? You know, I mean, bro. Like, let's let's let's. I'm not I'm not trying to motherfucking whoop you whoop whoop you, dog. But I mean, you 52 years old, my G, and you looking better than some of these 30 year old motherfuckers, dog. What is your health regimen? Okay, when I changed all my eating habits, um, I went from it's it's funny what I'm about to say. No more white rice, brown rice. Uh, no more um, white pasta, wheat pasta, or vegetable pasta. Uh, no more white bread, wheat bread. If I eat bread. Okay, so I say this: stay away from everything that's white. Okay. Yeah. Drink a lot of water. I pretty much drink. I try to drink about at least a gallon of water every single day. Okay. Water has to be your best friend. Now you are automatically going to slim down by your eating habits. Stay away from fried food. Definitely stay away from fried food. Try to stay away from a lot of uh, sugary foods, especially foods that ca carbonation like soda. Um, you know, club soda, or whatever. Anything that's going to make you feel, fucking feel bloated. And start doing, um, if you will, uh, calisthenics at home. Push-ups, sit-ups, crunches, pull-ups. Whatever you can do, you will automatically, just by your eating habits, and the number one thing you got to stay away from is beer. Yeah, beer is the worst, bro. It's oh, that blow-up shit full of yeast. Yes. Right? I, so I, I stopped drinking beer. I went on a keto diet, bro, and I lost 25 pounds just from that, bro. You know right. what I mean? And I need I need to uh, step it up one more time to get to the next level. Uh, Biden or Trump? I shouldn't even have to say this, but as a shamefully that I'm going to admit, neither. Okay. Who did you vote for? Neither. I didn't vote this year. And I'm going to tell you why. People might get upset. I'm not a Trump supporter, and I'm not a Biden supporter. And I'll tell you why. Because to me, both of them are a fucking joke. I don't support Trump. I don't support what he fucking stands for. Number two, Biden is pretty much, and I'm being sarcastic, two months away from fucking dementia. 100%. Yeah, it's a fact. This is our choices? The greatest country in the world, and these two fucking clowns are our choice. So you know what I said for the first time in a long time? I'm good on this one. I mean, how do you feel about real quick? I know you got to get out of here, bro. I know you got shit to do, dog. You know what I mean? And I'm just kind of like, nah, not yet, bro. But um, I mean, how do you feel about this climate that we're in, bro? Because motherfuckers are like gangbanging on a Republican and Democratic fucking way, bro. Like people are unfollowing each other, longtime friends, bro, because they're supporting Trump or Biden or, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is like the first time in history that think about this. When I was a kid, I was in seventh grade when Jimmy Carter got voted in. OK, after that, and I'm not going to name him in order. Uh, Reagan, Bush, the first Bush. I think Bill Clinton, the second Bush, and then Obama, and then, you know, Trump, okay? Back then, you could have said, I'm voting for Jimmy Carter. No deal. I mean, no big deal. Back then, you could have said, I'm voting for Bill Clinton. No big deal. I'm voting for Obama. No big deal. Today, if you say, I'm voting for Trump, fuck you, motherfucker. You racist piece of shit. Why can't we just exercise our freedom of speech and let people vote or be, you know, or voice whoever they want to vote for. 100%. I know people, look, I'm going to go ahead and fucking say it. A lot of you guys don't realize that a lot of the Chicano rappers that I interviewed told me off camera, and I'm not going to name, they voted for Trump. Yeah. Did I look at them any different? No. Should I have? No. They have their reasons, and I didn't ask them. I didn't ask them. It, you know what? You treat me with love and respect, I treat you with love and respect.
All right, so this is your this is favorite right here. All right, this is the, this is the ending segment, bro. Yes, Fav- sir. F- favorite uh, classic rock band, The Doors. Who? Hundred percent. Led, me Led too. Zeppelin. Yeah, Led so. Ze- Yeah, Doors. Led Zeppelin. Hundred percent. Favorite heavy metal band, dog. Ozzy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when when you when you were doing uh, uh, the uh, uh, you're talking about uh, Paranoid. I was doing, uh, what was I doing? I, I thought about it earlier, but anyways, whatever. Uh, favorite uh, um, oldies? Fuck, the first person that came to my mind, and I don't even know if they really consider the oldies, but I'll tell you the first, James Brown. James Brown, uh, funk. Fuck, the first the first uh, group that came to my mind was the Barcades. Okay, okay. Uh, gangster rap. Of course, NWA, because I was there. okay. Chicano rap. First person that came to my mind, believe it or not, was probably Night Owl. Night Owl. Yeah. That's interesting, though. Night Owl of San Diego. Yeah, Night Owl. Um, of course, I could people could have said Frost because he was, what well, people say, the first one. But when you said it, the first person that came to my mind, because when I first heard that song, Here Comes the Night Owl, um, and the way he was flipping it, it was so different. He was flipping it the way Bone Thugs uh, 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 rapped, and I I believe that he was he had that style before them, and I liked it because he was different. So, one thousand percent, dog. Um, real my, real quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, my favorite color. What's your favorite color? Black. Blue. Blue. Okay. Blue. Blue. Hold on, real quick. Before we end this right now, let the ceremony begin. Countless battles, I walk with no shadow. Yeah. Desert in sandal, the ghost with the candle. Woo! King of all crowns, rip the rattle off serpents. Blood, I thirst, says I am the worst. Ah! They follow your footsteps, you have no footprints. I am the surface, you worthless purpose. The moon, the stars, I'm connected to darkness. Heads of marksmen, I've hunted the farthest. Village of troops, monotop the roof. Black Sunday service with Holocaust roots. Homo Kabbalah, black magic and balas. These AKs and hollows will leave you forgotten. Woo! This bottomless season, you look. Looking for me, Mussolini, Gordavi, the world can I stop me? I'm legend, remember me? If this since birth, you were delivered in a hearse. Your mother and your father trade your soul for a curse. I'm a soldier, coming at you like a locomotive. Woo! Never knew I navigate the culture. Woo! Servants at the tabernacle potions. The devil made my father little spirit set beside me. My mother was a slave to three witches on the island. Ever cheat death? Uh. Ever wake up and can't catch one breath? <laughs> Master of obstacles, the Nostradamus. I structure the continent, the director of operas. I swing my arms, I move the seas, I change the weather, 500 degrees. The god of chaos, I shed no pity. Come over for the seance. Hey, kitty, kitty. The ruler of your conscience. Yeah. In your head, I'm a monster. Uh. Take control of all your options. Yeah. There's no way you gonna stop this. The ruler of your conscience. I just wanted to play that real quick, bro. A little bit of Lucky Zanzu right there. Okay, let me tell you something, Lucky Zanzu. Um, I'm going to tell you why I liked it right off the bat. Because it was different. Who else was out there rapping like that? You know what, bro? Because when you, when you speak about different, bro, I've always been different, bro. To the detriment of me or to the possibly uh, some people might say, not the genius, but the outbox in me, the different in me. Right. Um, I just wanted to play you that, bro. You know what I mean? Because um, you, you, I respect your ear. I respect you, bro. You know what I mean? And I just wanted to like, you know, just throw that out. That's there. something that I would bump. Today, that's something that I would bump. Because once again, it's different. I like different. I like to challenge people to be different. Hey, shout out to everybody that's different out there. I love you motherfuckers. Um, uh, everybody, everybody. A- any shout outs you want to give on the way out of here, bro? Yeah, first and foremost, but 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 let me say this uh, before we get out of here. I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank everybody, not only that has supported Lucky, but that has supported me, Rodian Radio, who has uh, seen the documentary, who has given on the GoFundMe, and I want to be the first to say that I wouldn't be sitting here and I would have never have accomplished anything if it wasn't for you guys. So I want to thank everyone, uh, honestly, from the bottom of my heart for supporting me, uh, for tuning in, for watching you know, for everything that you guys are doing, uh, whether it's negative or positive, you guys are still watching, but I appreciate you guys. So once again, thank thank you guys, first and foremost, for tuning in, 
Um, other than that, I want to thank you for blessing me with this opportunity to be here and chop it up with you. Uh, also want to thank um, uh, John Elkins for supporting me and being a part of my team. My boy Daniel, DG Media Clips. My son Brian, Boomer. My boy Omar. Uh, Roger, I can keep going down the line, but that's pretty much people that have helped me. But my core team, as of right now, I have to say John Elkins and DG. And, you know, I want to just, once again, just thank everybody for tuning in because uh, I'm, I'm truly blessed. You know, I couldn't walk away tomorrow from this whole thing and feel fulfilled that I've accomplished something. But I want to keep going because I want to continue to open the door. Once again, I am only here... People may not like this, that don't understand our culture, but I am here for our people because we need the, our, that door open. It has not been opened yet. You know, uh, Chicano rap has never peaked, in my opinion. It hasn't, bro. Okay. Um, so if I can do something, here's all I want. I just want to be a voice. You know, bro, I just want to thank you, dog, for being the voice and the most respected voice out there in uh, Chicano rap music. Um, I feel like this is your second win, bro. I mean, I really, I, I, I was really like, I was kind of upset with you, bro. And I'll be 100% with you, dog. I was, I was upset with you because I felt like uh, uh, when I listened to your story, when I listened to your interviews, bro, um, you, I, I was upset with you because I was mad that you didn't, um, I felt like that you felt defeated at one point in your early career as yeah. a as a young man. You know what I mean? Which uh, I mean, I, I bro, I made the stupidest mistakes. I didn't really mature until I was like 37, 38 years old. I'm a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Um, and this is coming from someone. Uh, when I tell you that, I come from the most humbling. Uh, uh, as I sit here, as a very humbled individual, and I absolutely mean no disrespect, bro. Right. You know what I, I mean? And but I can understand that nobody knows what you felt back in them times when you were not when you were in the circle, but you weren't really a part of the circle, dog. You know what I mean? But you were a key factor in that circle and you didn't get your fucking light, bro. You know what I mean? The point of having you right here and to seeing you motherfucking do what you do is me being a part of giving you this fucking light, dog. You know what I mean? That you fucking well deserve the flowers before the motherfucker's dead. You know what I mean? Like, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, don't wait to, don't wait to, to give this dude his motherfucking shit when, when he's fucking dead and be like, oh, well, fucking Tony A was fucking this. He was that, blah, blah, blah. I loved him. He was a legend. No, you tell this motherfucker right now. You know what I mean? You tell this motherfucker right now. Don't wait for a motherfucker's dead to put a t-shirt on your motherfucking on your motherfucking chest and feel like, you know what I mean? You honoring the motherfucker. Honor the motherfucker when he's a fucking alive. You know what I mean? If Lucky's doing great, reach out and say, Lucky, you doing great, dog. I love you. Don't hate on what motherfuckers are doing. You know what I mean? But fuck me, this dude right here. You know what I mean? God, dog. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't. I, I was. I was in the gang, stuck in the gang shit in the '90s and shit. And and and, and, and I feel ashamed that I didn't. I, I heard the name, but I was in a point in my life where I can actually actually respect the name and the history until this point in my life. And I'll be the first one to admit to you. I mean, I'm not the first one, but whatever. I don't know, dog. To admit you in front of your face, dog. Thank you for what you do. You've done for the shit, the history, bro. You're welcome, bro, and, and I'm very humbled, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I also have a confession I got to make. Um, you came to my house, and you did an interview, and you brought me a spread, and I ate that motherfucker. Oh, shit. I ate that motherfucker. Chicha, I did, bro, I I did a little package for you. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's I did right. A, that's right. I mean, I, 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 I so uh, my thing with is I'm coming to, I've never gone to another dude's podcast since I started doing this podcast shit, dog. Yeah. And, and I was, I was going to this dude, he, homie had hit me up. You know what I mean? And I was like, bro, like I was thinking the same thing, but I, 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 what I, the exact words that I told you more or less was like, bro, I was waiting for my numbers to get up until I reached out to you to have you on, dog, right. even though I gave you a shout out beforehand when you were coming up and you were fucking killing it, bro, you know? But uh, uh, um, 
I, I, uh, uh, I, so when I went to your fucking crib, to your spot, dog, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I wanted to, uh, like, I'm going to another man's table, right? Like, you're going to sit at another man's fucking dinner table where he fucking eats, you know what I mean? And if you don't bring this motherfucker something to eat, then you ain't motherfucking shit, you know what I mean? And I ain't trying to talk shit to anyone else that's been on this podcast and didn't bless him with something, dog. But he, I, I, I felt in my heart, I said, oh shit, I'm going to put a spread together for him, you know what I mean? And I got this big ass Ziploc bag from the 99 cent store. The, the, I, it's the biggest one I've ever seen. It's big. It's like a five gallon. It's not a, a one gallon that you usually get, you know what I mean? And I, and I said, all right, what would I want in a spread? You know what I mean? And I put the beef jerky. I put the, put the chicharrones in that bitch. You know what I mean? I put all the little, the, oh, I got him a hot pickle too. <laughs> I swear and to God. And a Cheeto. I, yeah. And I got all that beef shit. Beef jerky. Yeah. And, and, and so you really, I mean, how did you feel when I gave, and I brought him a bottle of wine and some fucking uh, hoodstock shit, whatever. But how did you feel? I mean, that was a weird present to get, right? That was actually a good one. Uh, I, I enjoy. I really enjoyed that motherfucker, bro. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. And I'm reading a lot of these comments right here. I like them. Uh, a lot of people saying, uh, what did I say? Uh, Tony Yates looking at the time like, damn, no, dude. I'm looking at your comments, so. You know, nah, Tony's got to go. He's got some other shit to do and shit. But anyways, bro, thank you. Thank, thank you, brother. Thank, thank you, you, dog. This has been, I mean, bro, Has I, I mean, you've done interviews before. You're very selective in the interviews you do. But how did you feel that this went? I mean, you had a vibe with me already, right? Well, I like, loved it because, let me tell you something. When people have invited me in the past to come speak on their podcast, I always ask them, I'll go only if I can say what I want to say. And you'll be surprised how many people say, well, let's try to keep it clean. And I usually deny them. I knew with you, I can be I can be myself. Yeah, I mean, that's who I want. I don't want nobody else. Yeah, but <laughs> I don't there, want the neighbor. There's some people that are like, well, it's family orientated. And I know, but I'm like, but this is me. I want people to get me. You know, I, yeah, I, I mean, you didn't ask me nothing, bro. You were just like, fucking, bro. Like, I, you, you were like, I can do it. And I think it was like, you said, I can do it in October. You know what I mean? Here we are in November. You know what I mean? Because yeah, he did it his 100th episode and he was willing to do some shit after that. But he didn't give me no, like, oh, any, any, like, stipulations. You know what I mean? And I, but I was just like, bro, like, what do you want to do, dog? You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I was asking the homie, like, well, how should we do it? Should we go on some shit? Should we, what do we and, and we talked about it, but obviously we went on our fucking own shit, bro. Yeah. We just did it organically. Everything we talked about doing, <laughs> We 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 kind of did it, but we just we just went with the flow. And this is what's dope about this dude, because this dude is 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 I mean, a hundred and so and so episode uh, that he's one hundred eleven. Yes, tomorrow will be 111. 111. Dazza. Who fucking Dazza, man? Oh, my God, dog. I think I jacked off the Dazza in the penitentiary off a of Lowrider magazine. Don't tell her that shit. But anyways, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, uh, amazing uh episode that I'm going to tune into just because I know the history. I mean, I've seen the history of her on all kinds of magazines, whatnot. You know what I mean? But I mean, bro, you, you, so this is two dudes talking dog on that, that are used to doing this shit, yes. dog. I mean, I want us to be the fucking like Joe Rogan's got a fucking crazy good relationship with fucking uh, Joey Coco Diaz. Like yes. I want us to do this shit, dog. Absolutely. I mean, at least once a year, bro. On, 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 I go on your platform, you come on my own platform, dog. And just to chop it up and just just to keep a fucking relationship going, dog, and a healthy one, a beautiful one. Uh, uh, like, we did 400. Yeah. All, like, 400 people stayed on this bitch. You know what I mean? I love you. Thank you so much. Everybody, give it up for Tony A., the wizard. <laughs> <laughs>